WeatherTech Sports Car Championship on IMSA Radio. Hello, everybody, and welcome along to our coverage, flag-to-flag -flag coverage of uh, the... Lexus Grand Prix at Mid-Ohio as we bring IMSA Radio and IMSA TV together from the Haggerty Global Broadcast booth. John Hindoff and Jeremy Shaw on duty today. As always, Shay Adam down on pit lane, which is clearing off very rapidly. A huge crowd uh, on hands uh, for the pit walk. Shay Adam, are we starting to see the race cars now? Can we go racing? Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, John. I can see down to the end of the LMP3 grid, but not yet any of our GTD cars. There are still so many officials out on this grid. Well, officials from the teams, I should say, because our IMSA safety officials have gotten into their formation at the exit of the pit boxes. We are going to fire up these engines in three minutes time. Drivers are all in their cars and all that's left to do is, oh, yeah, go racing. Uh, we have 2.4 miles, 13 corners, turn three and turn 10 really kind of don't count because they're absolutely flat out. Good overtaking opportunities going up the hill to turn two at the keyhole, going down the hill to turn four just in front of China Beach, the huge gravel trap down there. Through the S's, well, we've seen some side-by-side -side this weekend already in some of the other races that we've been privileged to watch this weekend. And then maybe a bit of outbreak into the carousel, maybe side-by-side -side around there before the little left-hand kink onto the start-finish straight. No, onto the finish straight, because that pit straight is where the chequered flag comes out and where we do restarts. The start of the race and the original green flag will be shown just at the kink on the run down to turn four. It's a vagary of Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, which I don't believe uh, is replicated anywhere else in the world. If you know better, at IMSA Radio, please, to let us know. We'd be happy to see that come up out on our screens on the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Uh, around the circuit here at Mid-Ohio, around the world on RS2 via IMSAradio.com, where if you're outside the US and uh, you're in a territory that does not have a network TV deal, you can also see full and interrupted uh, world feed pictures as well via the uh, video, live video tab at the top left of imsaradio.com. And we're on Sirius 207 here in the US as well. So if you're moving around and you are correctly equipped, or at least your automobile is, uh, then you can take us with you wherever you go. Uh, if you haven't got Sirius, Number one, why haven't you? And number two, you can always Bluetooth us or listen via your smart device and your car speakers via RS2 IMSA Radio. Jeremy, I love this circuit. It's got a bit of everything. It's quick. It's very, very nuanced in terms of the rise and fall of the track, not just in the up and down, but the side to side. The camber of the track here can make things very different, very difficult and very challenging for our drivers. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is a challenge, and it's one that everybody enjoys here. It's scenic. It's uh, a good variety of corners. There are some overtaking opportunities, although there's also sections where if you're in a faster car trying to get around a slower class car, you've just got to be patient because uh, through two or three sections, it's quite easy to lose two or three seconds on one lap to uh, to some to your rivals or in terms of lap times uh, and you just got to be patient patience is a big factor here at the middle house sports car course for the drivers uh, and our uh, uh, porsche keys to the race jeremy it, it is as the engines are just firing down there on the pit lane uh, it is a short lap strategically i think you've got to be flexible here it's almost like we were back at the, the on the streets of long beach here y you'll take whatever the safety car gives you here and that might throw all of your best laid plans out of the window yeah it's a track where you know sometimes there's cautions there's, there's not always caution periods here it's it's a track where you can make a mistake go off course and sometimes get back on again uh, of course if you go off at china beach you're likely to get stuck down there so that's probably the, the biggest danger point but there's various other places on this track where you can get stuck in the gravel as well but you know the good news is there's on pretty much all of the corners here there's at least a, an area of grass between the racetrack and the gravel track so 
if you're, if you're close to keeping it on the track, that maybe won't go into the gravel and you can prevent yourself from causing a full course caution. As you can probably hear, the cars are moving. Shea Adam is down in the pit lane, making sure that everyone uh, leaves there. Somebody that we've welcomed here today for the first time, Shea Adam, is Juan Montoya, otherwise engaged. Uh, a little, <laughs> uh, a little uh, hop, skip and a jump away on the road course at Indianapolis uh, until yesterday evening. His first time in the car in warm-up this morning. Yes, it was. And Juan Pablo Montoya is ready for the race today. He has won at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course twice before in his illustrious career, 1999 and 2019, looking to try and make that span of time a little bit less than 20 years between victories here. But he got to do the 20-minute warm-up session, and that's it. He'll get back in the car after Henrik Hedman has met the minimum drive time, which for LMP2 is one hour, or in other words, more than a stint. That was the sound of the only Porsche in the field today. The right motorsport Porsche being driven by Ryan Hardwick off the pit lane, which means, John, I'm all alone. All the race cars are where they should be, on the track. Yeah. That's great. We like to hear that. And good afternoon to everybody trackside just after two o'clock in the afternoon here at Mid-Ohio. Super to be back in this green and pl pleasant land. A, a, a mark of Juan Montoya, by the way, uh, Jeremy Shaw, that he jumped in that car and for pretty much all of the session until I think the last lap for two of his competitors, he was fastest in the class. Now, I know it's not about setting a, a lap time in in the morning warm-up session. It's about you know getting the car back in one piece and making sure it's OK. Nevertheless, um, you don't really have very much to teach Juan Montoya, even when it comes to uh, jumping in a car at late notice. Uh, no, there's not many cars he hasn't driven or been successful in over the years. But it certainly is a, you know, a bit of an adaptation to go from driving an Indy car yesterday to uh, a sports car here uh, at Mid-Ohio today. So it's, it's not easy, but at least he has a warm-up uh, to, to get used to that car for today. And of course, he was driving just a couple of weeks ago as well. Uh, as well. But uh, earlier today, the, the uh, prototype challenge race, Tony Kazimitz was also busy in Indianapolis coaching drivers in the, on the road to Indy. He, before the race this morning, he had not even sat in that car this weekend. He hadn't been near the track this weekend. So he had uh, no problem with new sets of tyres for the race this morning. But he came through the field and finished a magnificent second place. Uh, and uh, there were, what, eight, 16 cars in that race. And he had to pass them all to get there. Uh, for one Pablo Matoya, uh, he's that car is already starting in third position with Henrik Hedman. So he's got a lot less work to do in terms of working his way forward. But, yeah, it is difficult to, to hop into a new car on the, on the, the next day. But if there's anybody you bank, bank to do a good job at that, it would be JPM. Weather just about perfect. We did have some interruptions yesterday on Superfast Saturday. In fact, had to curtail the Edema 2 Master MX-5 race. 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 48 Celsius on the track. 26 degrees Celsius in the air. It's a much more pleasant 79, but it's a great afternoon to go motor racing here. Are your front couple of rows in each of the classes? Four of the five potential classes for IMSA here. GTD is a BMW from Paul Miller Racing. Madison Snow will start the number one. He qualified that car yesterday. He'll have Stephen McAleer for company in the team. Caught off Motorsport AMG GT3. 1 and 32 on the front row from 27. Roman De Angelis, Heart of Racing Team, Aston Martin, and another BMW, Robbie Foley in the Turner Motorsport number 96 BMW. That's back in the blue and yellow colours this weekend. LMP3, Andretti Autosports this year is on pole, the number 36, red, white and blue car. That is Jarrett Andretti who starts with Josh Sarge be, uh, be alongside him for MLT Motorsports in the number 58 and it's Dan Goldberg and Gar Robinson for respectively performance tech number 38 and Riley Motorsports number 74 who are on the second row. Patrick Kelly takes another pole position for PR1 Mathis and Motorsport and they lock out the front row in LMP2 52 from 11 with Stephen Thomas starting the outside front row car ahead of Dragon Speed's Henrik Hedman, the number 81 uh, Orica and uh, Era Motorsport, the blue, number 18 Dwight 
white merriment. And at the front of the field, three rows of DP ice as the clock has now started as they've gone across the finishing line. But they've still got a little way to go to the green flag. That gives me a chance to tell you that Cadillac and Acura are on the front row. It's the 0-1 Cadillac with Sebastian Bourdais, who's up against Philippe Albuquerque for Konica Minolta, the number 10 blue and black Acura. Then it's Acura and Cadillac on row two. Ollie Jarvis for Meshank Racing, the car with the uh, pink and white as they head up towards the keyhole right now. He's got Tristan Nunes uh, for, uh, excuse me, he's got Alex Lynn for company in the Cadillac 02. That's the dark red tail end of that car, the black front end. And at the third row of the grid, it is Tristan Nunes for Wheeling Engineering, the number 31 red and white Cadillac, who has JDC Miller Motorsports, the black and gold number five, in sixth position. No split start here. We've got everybody together side by side. The Lexus Grand Prix at Mid-Ohio has just on two hours and 39 minutes to go as we see the green flag side by side start. A very good start indeed by Cadillac, but it's Philippe Albuquerque as they go three wide. Down to turn four for the first time, and Albuquerque from the outside of the front row cuts across and takes the lead in the black and blue. Konica Minolta Acura immediately jumping away. Everyone else has made it through turn five for the first time of asking. That's very good news indeed as they head through the S's for the first time. Super start by Philippe Albuquerque. Got really good traction coming down the hill and he's done the first part of the job. Second on the grid has translated Jeremy Shaw into leading the first green flag lap of the race exactly the plan going into this race he wanted to get a jump around the outside even down at turn four there that fast uh, right hander at the end of that downhill straight you can kind of run around the outside he didn't even need to do that because he was ahead before he got there able to take the line brilliant start there by philip albuquerque for acura in its home track tied on points with cadillac coming into this weekend but of course they lost the lead yesterday because we're qualifying points nowadays so they are three points behind uh, uh, Cadillac coming into this race, but in the front at the moment, as Acura leads Philip Albuquerque. Hearing from race control, the start is under review. Potential of a problem for Richard Highstand for Vassar Sullivan's Lexus number 17. That's the additional GTD car from Lexus. They normally want run one Pro, one Amp. They're running two Pro car, uh, two Amp cars here, excuse me, uh, in the Lexus Grand Prix in Mid-Ohio. I bet you can work out why that is if I just tell you those facts. We'll see what happens when race control have had a look at the start. Down in the heart of the race, in GTD is heart of racing, the 27. Aston Martin, Roman DeAngelo starting that car with Lexus and BMW right ahead of him. Madison Snow dropping back from pole position early on as Stephen McAlee and Team Kortov has even passed a couple of LMP3 because I reckon there was a little bit of a schmozzle, you know, at the back of the LMP3 field there, Jeremy. Magali has gone through taking advantage of that, got up to 18th position. He's got Core Autosport, Sean Creech Motorsport and AWA between... Uh, uh, pass, he's passed those and uh, he's also got himself up to the lead. Vassa Sullivan in second with that 17 car. And then the pole sitter, Madison Snow. I think there might have been a little contretemps somewhere around that first lap. Yeah, no question about it. Big shuffle there, and uh, the big gainer, of course, was that guy who's under investigation. Column 17, Richard Heisen. Maybe we can have a look here a little bit farther back through the field. Yeah, uh, he he's uh, already on the move there. His high stand. Uh, so and he, he continues <laughs> to, to compound the problem. I, I think he probably had the lead by the time they were past the uh, start-finish line. So that's a no-no. He's going to get a penalty for that. No question about it. That's odd. I mean, he should know the rules. He's won here previously. Uh, so we're not quite sure why he would have thought that was a good idea. Uh, if he could can't get pass till the line back again on, yeah. on the start, you can't pass till the line on the start. Yeah, that's you certainly the, that's can't pass thing. anybody else on another row, Correct. let alone three rows in front of you, because he started uh, back in the uh, seventh position in the class. So, uh, uh, yeah, he's going to make himself a lot of work to do now in that number 17. If he gives the ball back again, he might, he might be able to plead his case and perhaps get away with it, but he hasn't done that so far. So expect to see the number 17 Lexus uh, into the pit lane. The, uh, the front of the field stretching out a little bit, six tenths of a second, with Philippe Albuquerque starting the Cunningham and the number 10 Acura. And then another second back to Ollie Jarvis from Sebastian Bordet. Acura Cadillac, Acura Cadillac, Cadillac. 
Cadillac and top of the shop as far as LMP2 is concerned. Still the two PR1 Matheson as they were from their grid starts. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy and mixed up at the sharp end of the field. And we've got a pit caller already, Ori Fadani, uh, one of the LMP3s that was out of position, as was the number 33, Sean Creech Motorsport uh, car, right in the midst of the GT Daytona. And the front end of that car is coming off. Confirmation of the jump start penalty, a drive through for Richard Highstand for being out of line and overtaking before the uh, start line, which is pretty much at turn number three, where the green flag is thrown from. Shea Adam down in the pit lane watching this uh, unexpected early pit stop for AWA. Just a new nose for Ori Fidani. Well, not him, but the uh, Duquesne, where she drives. They have put the new one on. They're just trying to secure it. It's not going on with the class. There we go. Now they'll pull the car off the air jacks. It's interesting because the nose they pulled off has no visible damage. So Ori must have been radioing back saying that something was wrong with the car, and they thought that would be the easiest fix to try. In and out, and coming through now for the drive-through penalty. It is the number 17. Still two and a half hours to go and a little bit of change. As the uh, high stance out and has not lost the lead lap. I mean, a huge jump. He's two, three rows down on the right-hand side of the track. He's right in amongst the LMP3 cars and then just kept going. I suppose, Jeremy, you might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb at that point. Yeah, I just can't imagine what he was thinking there, to be, to be perfectly honest. I mean, he knows the rules here and um, I, I completely beyond me don't understand it uh, and he's uh, he's going to be awfully difficult to come all the way back from, from where he is right now with that drive-through penalty well behind the, the rest of the field so uh, certainly if, if his experience i don't know he got me in the lead of the race is uh, philip albuquerque to stretch it out a little bit now 1.7 seconds he's just uh, set the fastest lap of the race again last time around, 113.2. So that record uh, still quite a long way away from that. Well, second away from that. Kevin Magnussen last year, a 12.1. But uh, again, you're just five laps in the books now. So tyres really just coming into their own right now. Uh, and of course, they had to start this race on the tyres all with which they qualified. But Albuquerque putting some space between himself and Sebastian Bourdais at the front of the field. And he's got Oliver Jarvis and Alex Lynn uh, Bourdais' teammate in a little train behind them, but back uh, down the field, the GTD cars, uh, they're, they're quicker than... This is why I don't like the fact that we're not doing the split starts anymore, quite frankly, because the uh, GTD cars, even with the, the non-pro drivers at the wheel, they tend to be quicker, in the, particularly in the early stages, yeah. than some of the LMP3 gentlemen drivers. Uh, and that sort of kind of tends to shuffle up the pack and uh, it, it can produce incidents as well. Yeah, they do get their tyres, their Michelin tyres, up to temperature and pressure pretty quickly. They're uh, obviously a, a street-based car for GT3s now. I mean, they, they never started life as a showroom spec BMW or a uh, Mercedes or Lexus or McLaren or Porsche or Acura. Um, they're or Aston Martin, they, they were all purpose-built race cars, but even so, they are a little bit heavier, and so they do get the tyres up the temp, as Jeremy says, they get amongst... Not sure why split starts were were abandoned, to be honest. That's maybe some, uh, something that we could look into uh, for our next race. Uh, let's go down to Shea Adam, who is in the pit lane. We're settling in just nicely. Shea, where have you walked on down to? to Team Cawthorpe Racing because the Mercedes out front is that which is shared with Mike Skeen and Stephen Mackler. Mike, that was a fantastic start from Stephen, just as you planned it, I'm imagining. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, there was a lot of unknown with LMP3 cars and no split start, but uh, Stephen handled it perfectly. We're sitting in a really nice spot now with a little buffer between us, and hopefully he can draw a nice little start, uh, a little gap here at the start for us, and uh, we can play it safe throughout, but we'll see, you know, it's a long race, so starting off well, but it's a long way to go. You've got a lot of expertise in LMP3 machinery. Did that help your planning for the start of this race at all? 
Yeah, Stephen and I both have driven LP3s quite a bit, and uh, we certainly have a lot of experience and knowledge about how those cars get going and how difficult they are on cold tires. So um, certainly that played into our favor, I think, but it, it wasn't uh, any secret for sure. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. So just under two and a half hours still to go. And it's Philippe Albuquerque by three quarters of a second from here, charging Sebastian Bordier, who has the fastest lap of the race at 1.12, 9.68. The 1.0 from the 0.1, Acura from Cadillac. And then it's a two second gap back to Oli Jarvis for the second of the Acuras. The two guys at the front of the field, Jeremy, are trying to set sail early. Yeah, and again, uh, the, the, the traffic there, they're already working their way through uh, the leaders now, or getting towards the leaders in GTD. And, and they're together, at, the, the leaders are together, as well. yeah, together at the keyhole, Jeremy, in that traffic, you're spot on there, and that three quarters of a second is down to a tenth of a second as they're going through the GTD traffic, trying to pick the right way. Bordet goes to the left-hand side, that'll be the outside for turn four, but can he get the cut back as they head through that right-hander up the hill towards turn five at Madness? Big crowd on hand there, good afternoon to you all. Now down the hill to six, more traffic. It's the heart of racing Aston Martin that they're about to come up against, I think, as the, they come through. Follow my leader a little bit through the S's. Now the fourth position is uh, uh, Roman DeAngelis in Aston Martin in GTD, so already just eight laps in the race. And uh, he's catching up to the leaders in GTD, John. That's how quickly he catches traffic here. And the lap time last time for the race leader, 115.3. So already two seconds that cost him in terms of the lap times he had been turning prior to hitting the traffic. Uh, and Oli Jarvis is not that far behind either in the white and pink Auto Nation Sirius XM. MSR Acura, he's got them in his sights now. Down the inside into the keyhole, battle for the lead. Cadillac up on the kerb. Philippe Albuquerque is defending Good robustly, check. but he got a little bit of hip and shoulder there from Sebastian Borde, who takes the lead. And Cadillac go to P1 and lead the Lexus Grand Prix at Mid-Ohio with Oli Jarvis charging to get on terms with the leading pair. Well, opportunity move there by Sebastian Bourdais. He knows he's not going to get many opportunities to take the lead because the Acura works well around here, but he saw his opportunity there and he grafted a bit of a hip check going through the uh, keyhole turn. That's not unusual there. Uh, I think it was good, clean, fair racing between those two, but the last lap time for the leader, 117.2. So uh, that's uh, four seconds slower than the best lap that has been turned in this race so far. It was actually by Sebastian Bourdais on lap six, one minute 12.9, the fastest lap so far. But this is gonna be a great battle between these two. We saw two weeks ago, the two Acuras back and forth a little bit in the later stages. And already we've seen now between Acura and a Cadillac. Also two weeks ago, you might remember, the Acuras, or excuse me, the Cadillacs, were the, for the balance of performance, they had to carry an extra 10 kilos of weight compared to what they had run at Long Beach at the previous event. That was, uh, 10 kilos isn't a lot, but it was, uh, it perhaps took uh, the edge off the Cadillacs a little bit, and it certainly felt that way. And uh, the, the Acuras ended up winning pretty comprehensively. Let's have a look at this opportunist pass, just dives to the inside at the keyhole there. Great pass, the door was slightly open, and Bourdais he took it. But where I was going with that point on the BOP, that 10 kilos has been taken off the Cadillacs again this weekend. And I think we've seen how closely matched those cars seem to be before we get into the race. Great pass by Bourdais. Uh, Wicker Bill asking if the split start was just scrapped for this race. We haven't had a split, split start uh, at all this season. Uh, yeah, no, we have. It was just like, I think it was just last last week that we stopped having uh, it. Oh, yes, yeah, so we didn't have, definitely didn't have one at WeatherTech, did we? No. no I, I think I, it was just there. Right, there I and think. here. Um, yeah. Not sure why that might be. Well, they, 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 they did sort of explain it that it was a. Th Decision came up from on high, basically, is what, okay. is what it boils down to. Um, uh, and I think not everybody's in total agreement. I'm certainly not, but uh, whatever. Uh, it just thinks it, it, uh, it... I like the fact that we have split starts. We can focus, we can have a, a good, clean look at the GT field battling amongst themselves. Yep. Um, because we're always going to replay of that, which is great. Whereas when, when all the cars are together, it just makes it messy at the start. But anyhow, well, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> 
it, well, as long as there's no incidents, it doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, in LMP2, by the way, Patrick Kelly led from the start, but Stephen Thomas found his way through on lap uh, five, and uh, that was, we're now just completing 10 laps, and Stephen Thomas has set sail. He's put 10 seconds between himself and Patrick Kelly in the early stages, and Henrik Hedman uh, is another similar margin back in third place. Let's have a look at that pass down at the end of the... Uh, uh, of the back straight gets to the inside and in makes that pass form. nice and cleanly, yeah, for Stephen Thomas. He made, Patrick Kelly made it, made it look rather easy for him, actually. But uh, uh, Thomas is flying at the moment. Having said that, Henry Hedman, Hedman has just uh, set his best lap in the race so far of 18.5. But Stephen Thomas, his best of 15.7. That's a really good lap by the LMP2 leader at the moment. IMSA Radio live, and it's the Mid-Ohio Lexus Grand Prix. Good to have your company here just outside Lexington, Ohio. Jeremy Shaw and John Hindoff in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre with Shea Adam down in the pit lane. A couple of callers already, but they were uh, for early problems. Sorry for Darnie in and out, replaced the nose on the Duquesne T0808, number 13 car. And, of course, uh, Richard Highstand broke ranks and overtook before the start line down at Turn 3. So that Lexus RCF GT3 has been in a long pit road for a drive through. Everyone else running to their strategy so far. And the battles, as we have come to expect, are thick and fast all the way through the field. It is Sebastian Porte then leading now by... Not very much, actually. But actually, he's just bad when I say that. He's pulled out maybe three seconds over the last couple of laps. It's the battle for second and third between the two Acuras that's getting our attention as they come across the start-finish line. And the leader disappears round the super-quick left-hander that is turn one. Ollie Jarvis in the pink, white and blue Sirius XM Auto Nation Acura for My Shank Racing has Philippe Albuquerque, another Acura, but not teammates. They're are Acura stable mates, yes, but not run by the same team and very much in this for each of their own good. And Albuquerque yeah. jinx around the uh, jinx around the uh, one of the LMP2 cars. Chip Ganassi, LMP3, that's the, that's the leading, leading car in LMP3. Uh, three, yeah. yeah, Jared Andretti. And the, do you think that who that's who Chip Ganassi was talking about when she asked about? the two car teams and said look you're the only two car team in DPI and he sort of I, I could almost even from the Hackney Global Broadcast Centre hear his eyebrow raised and said well you know not really because we've got another two car team and thinking that the Acuras are working together Jeremy yeah well they're not uh, I mean, yeah, there's, there's some, certainly some technical data that is shared, but certainly not in terms of setup. There is in terms of the uh, engine performance on those cars. Uh, as we see a battle there between the, the Tristans held up behind Gar Robinson as they go around the carousel. But as we saw last time out at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, uh, there's no quarter asked or given between those two Acura camps at Conica Minolta Racing and Meyer Shack Racing. And they battled uh, hammer and tongs, they did. Uh, at last time out a couple of weeks ago, it was a thrilling battle between those two, and uh, it was an opportunity to move by Albuquerque on uh, Tom Blomquist that got that lead after Blomquist had taken it away a few laps earlier. That was a thrilling battle, but uh, yeah, no, they're, they're not, uh, they're certainly not really working together. They'll, they'll certainly try and work together to beat Cadillac, but uh, it's, it's gloves off between themselves. Yeah, 2:21 to go, and hello to. Andy Florio to Tony Thompson to Dave Alcock to Chris Humphreys just coming back from marshalling doing some corner working at Pembrey circuit and tuned in. Chris, thanks for your service today and indeed all of our corner workers, marshals, flaggers, uh, any kind of volunteers who've helped get motor racing on this busy weekend. Thank you for that over in the UK coming up to half past seven on a Sunday evening. So many of you will be getting back home or still perhaps on your way home and listening to IMSA Radio on the way back. Uh, hello to Gert Van Camp as well, finishing off a great weekend with the uh, IMSA stream. Good luck to everyone, he says. Uh, and to Alan Prosser as well, uh, who is tuned in. Thank you for all your comments at IMSA Radio if you'd like to get in touch with us. Let's pick up some of the battles in GT Daytona. 
with the uh, double entry this weekend from Lexus and uh, not great start for Richard Highstand. He's had to drop to the back after that drive through, but the substantive, the full season entry in GT Daytona, Frankie Monte Calvo sits in sixth position. Right ahead of him, the car banned by Peregrine at Lamborghini Huracan. That's the dark green, green car. Fourth place for Roman De Angelis for Heart of Racing. Third for Turner BMW, the 96 blue and yellow BMW. Second, the pole sitting. Paul Miller Racing, Grey, number one, Madison Snow, and still leading in GTD, Stephen McAleer for Team Court of Motorsport. That in-race update coming to you with VP Racing Fuels. And at the front of the field, we've still got Albuquerque and Jarvis battling together some two and a half seconds back from the leader. In the other categories, Stephen Thomas with the uh, yellow wiper blade on the PR1 Matheson number 11, the blue and white car, that's how you tell them apart. Yellow wiper blade right in the middle of the windshield for the number 11, red for the number 52. That's the only difference that I can see on those two cars. They're having a cracking scrap at the moment out there on uh, the circuit. And the uh, Sean Creech motorsport car, which is down the field a little bit, Lance Wilsey just going a lap down to the leaders as they went either side of Richard Highstand going up to the keyhole a couple of three moments ago. In LMP2, Andretti Autosport from pole position by 3.2 seconds for the 36 Ligier. Performance Tech and Dan Goldberg in second place, three seconds further back. And as we said at the front of the field, it's still DPI's one through six, exactly as we would expect. And we'll keep you up to date throughout the race with our VP Racing Fuel in race updates carving through traffic. Sebastian Bourdais having a cracking run at the moment. And this, Jeremy Shaw, has shades of Long Beach. Is uh, is uh, uh, absolutely shades of Long Beach written all over it. Bourdais driving away from a quality field. Yeah, hopefully they won't have the same uh, effect at Long Beach where he threw it all away uh, when he was passing some traffic. Uh, but he's certainly been masterful in dealing with the traffic so far, has Bourdais. Uh, and he's uh, stretched out lead. It was as high as three seconds, a little bit less than that, as they come up, go down the back straight to, uh, on their 18th lap, I think. But uh, he's been absolutely superb in his early stages. And tell you what, he was so mad at himself for making it so difficult at Long Beach. He'll be looking not... He doesn't want to do that again. But a great battle going on here between the two uh, Acuras for second and third positions. But Oliver Jarvis, I'm sure, is a little bit frustrated right now because I feel he probably thinks he's faster than Philip Albuquerque. But getting past Albuquerque isn't the work of a moment. Uh, Tom Blomquist managed it uh, briefly last week, but Albuquerque took it back again, and he, he doesn't want to give up a position now in the early stages. In LP2, Stephen Thomas continued to extend that lead over Patrick Kelly. It's now up to 20 seconds. That's remarkable. Uh, Stephen Thomas's pace in the early stages. Really, really good job he is doing. And uh, similarly, Jared Andretti, uh, a four-second lead in the uh, LMP3 category, John. Uh, let's go down to Shea Adam, who is with Jack Hawksworth, uh, Lexus driver here at Mid-Ohio. Jack, you know how to win this race. You've done it before in GTD. First off, welcome back to this class. Did you miss GTD racing? Well, it's, you know, racing GTD Pro, GTD, you're all in the same machinery, right? So we've been out there battling together. But, uh, yeah, it's nice to be uh, nice to be in mid-Ohio. Obviously, big presence with Lexus sponsoring the event uh, this weekend. So, yeah, happy to be back, happy to be driving with uh, Richard again at an event which we've won in the past. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. Obviously, we've got a bit of work to do here after the drive through But, uh, you know, we get a bit of luck with a caution. We'll uh, try to take it to him. Well, and even without a caution, I mean, Richard's got the pace. He's already passed for a position at the back of the field, so this isn't over for the 17. No, definitely not. I mean, obviously, the, the gap to the front is, is large, so caution would help, and pass is difficult here, but, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do with strategy, and, uh, what, well, still over two hours to go, so uh, plenty of time to make something happen. It's really warm today. How has that affected the car? I, I don't know, yeah. I'm not, Richard's not said much on the radio, but... Uh, First time really all weekend conditions have been uh, other than FP1 where conditions have been hot. So I uh, guess we'll find out when we get out there. If anything, uh, should bring the tyres in a bit earlier. Just have to watch out for tyre deck in these conditions. Jack Hawksworth knows how to win this race. Let's see if he can do it for the third time. Good luck. Awesome. Thanks. Makes a, bit, a good uh, a good comment, a good point there, Jeremy. Jack Hawksworth there, um, lad from the northern reaches of the uh, 
of England in the United Kingdom, um, as you can probably tell from the accent for those of you who are listening internationally. Um, the cars in GTD and GTD Pro have exactly the same spec. When we do have GTD Pro running, it is literally just the drivers that, that put them into the GTD Pro category. So it's not as if they're having to get to no new machinery. Uh, true. Uh, so he, he's used to driving his car, he's used to driving here, used to having success here. So Jack Orktwist, uh, he's, a, he's a consummate pro these days and uh, a really good guy as well. Uh, and uh, this battle here, we, we, the two Cadillacs, the two Tristans have been having a heck of a battle. And Tristan uh, Vautier is definitely holding up Tristan Nunez, who's been struggling. That's a, an off for number 13 car, sorry for Dani. But uh, very frustrating for Nunez. Uh, Vautier almost drove him off the road there. It looked like coming out of the keyhole. Left in no room at all, just tracked out wide and pushed him off onto the grass. So here we're getting more and more frustrated. A poor lap last time ran over for Alex Lynn, a 119.4. It cost him about seven seconds on that lap. And the gap between third and fourth, the two Acuras and the second of the Cadillacs, is uh, almost 10 seconds two, now. Two over Cadillacs into the pit lane. I think they thought that we were going yellow for that spin for Ori Fadani down at turn number four. They've come in line astern. Shea Adam is watching this. We've stayed green and the 13 AWA car at the back of the field has continued. This might be a little bit of a spanner in the work. Shea Adam. Well, we're not going to be able to say the two Tristans anymore because one of them has been removed from the car. That would be Tristan Nunez. In goes Pippo Durrani. Fuel and tires for both of the cars there. Stickers for both. First car to get rolling was the 31, but that was also the first car into its pit box. The 5 is still leading the way. Yeah, Ori Fadani with that spin down at turn four, but he has recovered, and that car is moving again. In fact, just peels through turn one now. So still running quite nicely. Bordier leading. Stephen Thomas for LMP2 for PR More Maths and Motorsport. Jared Andretti for LMP3. Their lead for the number 36. And Stephen McAlee is still for GTD and Team Cothoff Motorsport. So Tristan Vautier stays in the car. People Durrani gets in to the number 31. They will then drop to fifth and sixth. And that puts them substantially off kilter, Jeremy, uh, from the other cars. We've been racing, what, some 27 minutes. Is that about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit more, before we would have expected a green flag pit stop? Yeah, probably closer to 15 before. But I think they, they, they can get it to the end from here on, on the same number of stops as, as everybody else is going to have to make. So I don't think they're, they're going to save themselves a pit stop, but it's certainly frustrating, I think, there for number 31 car uh, because uh, they were hoping to steal a march over at number five and maybe leapfrog them in the pit stops. Uh, and they, they, were running in fifth and sixth. they were running in fifth and sixth in any case, so they haven't lost uh, any ground. They're still on the lead lap. So they, you know, the good news is they made their stop. So when the other guys come into the pits, or if there is a full course caution, it will play into the favour of number five and number 31. But a faster stop there for the number five car without the change of driver, and they maintain that, that position. Uh, a lot of people on the wall, says Shea. Fadani's waiting for a gap to get back onto the circuit. This time it was turn nine. Incident responsibility. The number 52 car has been given a warning. And that was uh, an incident that happened uh, earlier on with the Power Matheson Motorsport Patrick Kelly car uh, with the number 12 car uh, that uh, they had a little uh, bit of side-by-side -side action. That's the Vasa Sullivan, Frankie Monte Calvo um, RCF GT3. So that was the warning that was passed over and Tower Motorsport also with a problem, that's the number 8 LMP2 car which running in 5th position in class, John Ferrano just going a wee bit wide like he might have been helped there at the carousel so it's already starting to get a little bit feisty as Ori Fadani is in the pit lane in the Orlando Corp.com yellow and black LMP3, it's not been a banner day for those guys caught up in something at right at the very start ended up in the back in two spins for Ori they're having a look at the back of that car the engine cover is coming off Shea Adams down there we'll keep an eye on that as the race at the front of the field continues for second and third position Philippe Albuquerque has second place at the moment half a second behind 
Ollie Jarvis wants that second place in the battle of the Acuras. At the moment, they're five seconds away from the leader, which is still Sebastian Bourdais. He claimed that lead earlier on, and he has been putting lap times down. The only, the rest of the field can only dream about at the moment a 14-2 last time around to a 15-1. Nearly a full second, Jeremy, in that last lap alone, gained by Sebastian Bourdais. Man, he's doing good, good work at the moment. Yeah, he certainly is. And uh, Alex Lynn is the guy who's struggling through the traffic at the moment. You see a pit stop for number 12, uh, Vassar Sullivan Lexus. That's the sixth place car comes into uh, the pits right now in the Lexus Grand Prix at Mid-Ohio. Alex Lynn, he's fallen 15 seconds now behind that battle for second and third between the two Acuras. That looks to be full service for that car. Again, I'd say this was a little bit early, but they may be going off strategy. Oh, now I say that, was that right side tyres only? Shea Adams down there, uh, and she will have a word with the team. Meanwhile, two Cadillacs side by side, and the two cars that pitted together going to down to turn number four, almost touching three across the track for a moment and down the inside. Here comes the 31, Pimo Durrani, and he goes up into sixth position. And, well, that was, again, fairly robust. No quarter asked or given. And really important that these two don't get caught up with this battle if they're going to make this different strategy work. They've come in off strategy, as we mentioned early on. Still means that they'll probably have to do the same amount of stops as everybody else. But what they can do particularly if there's a full course yellow, is they'll be able to close right up. Uh, they'll be able to close right up to the leaders. Yeah, and uh, that was a, could be a, a critical pass there for uh, Pippo Durrani. He's been uh, struggling to try and get that done. He's, he, he has been able to achieve what uh, Tristan Nunez was not. So up into fourth position now. He's certainly going to uh, put the hammer down, see if he can turn some good laps so that when the other cars come into the pits, he can take advantage of it. But before those two came into the pits, they were already about five seconds behind Alex Lynn in the number zero two car. So they were well off the, the tail of the lead in DPI. Meanwhile, Sebastian Bourdais has regained that gap again. It was out to uh, about 4.8 seconds, came down to as little as a second and a half, now out to five and a half between that first, the, the first two cars at the lead of this race. And again, that's what we're going to see throughout this race. The ebbing and flowing of traffic will... The, the concertina move on the... On the gaps between the leading cars will will close up and then it'll expand again. Let's go down to Shea Adam in the pit lane. We've got another spinner. It's the AWA Dwight Merriman car. That's on its out lap. And that is up at the top of the hill at the keyhole. And Shea Adam, there's been a couple of pit callers, including the Lexus. Chip off more tyres for the Lexus. That was the question I needed to uh, I don't know the answer to that. I did see them do the right side. I didn't see them do the left side necessarily, but I'll jump over and ask them. We did have a pit stop, as you said, for Dwight Merriman. That was four sticker cold tires, remember? And so he was out there on those fuel and a drinks bottle addition. He was handed one through the cockpit. But more importantly, into the pit lane, the 0-2 Cadillac is coming in. So this means that three of our four Cadillacs have made their first pit stops for fuel. How long can Bourdais stay out there? But this will be fuel and tires for Alex Lynn. I do not see the white helmet of Earl Bamber getting into the car as of yet. The 2018-2019 winner in the GTLM category. Those are sticker tires and four of them going on to this Cadillac. Okay, very interesting. And Alex Lynn then stationary in the pit lane or at least the 0-2 Cadillac. And I still, 34 minutes, that's getting a bit closer to it, but I would have thought 40 minutes easily round here for the DPIs. We did have a formation lap, of course, and it's kind of one and a half formation laps here. But even so, that's very interesting. Make a note of that with that car coming in at the end of its uh, 26th lap, 27th lap, excuse me. Better write that one down somewhere. Still, though, Sebastian Bordier at the keyhole. I mean, he's, 
he's imperious at the moment, Jeremy. Five and a half seconds, even when he's in traffic, it just doesn't seem to be slowing him down. He did a 14.9 last time through traffic. All right, his chasers are in traffic as well, but they're doing a 16 flat. He's consistently knocking half a second and more out of the guys uh, that are behind him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he is just... Uh driving quite beautifully right now and working his way through and uh, and uh, extending that lead over these two Acuras in second and third as you say 6.2 seconds a gap last time around after 27 laps and yeah they can do another at least at least uh, six or seven laps I would suggest uh, strategy I heard before they could do as many as 36 laps or maybe even more than that uh, if they're trying to save fuel at some stage in this race for the DPI cars. They've only done 27 so far, including, of course, the two pace laps. So that would mean that the, the first set would be a little bit shorter than the ones thereafter in the latter stages of the race. But still, I, I, uh, I think they can stay out certainly a bit longer now if they so choose. So go back down to Shea Adam. She's uh, sorted out our two tyres, four tyres. Uh, was it two Michelins or was it the full set for the first Lexus that was into the pit lane for a pit stop? Well, it was the number 12 Vassar Sullivan Lexus that was doing the pit stop demonstration earlier today. And they must have gotten a little bit more warmed up because that was a four tyre stop. Excellent job wow. by the Vassar Sullivan boys and girls. Yeah, that was very, very speedy for those guys. James O'Donnell this race weekend keeps on giving great racing and brilliant coverage all weekend. Good to have your company, James. Thank you for the kind words about uh, IMSA Radio. Big team effort, not just from us on the broadcast side, of course, but our camera operators and technicians uh, on site here at Mid-Ohio. Particularly want to mention our BSI colleagues for the communications to and from the pit lane. Back with us again. Uh, this year, hello to Bubba Clark and the rest of the team, and uh, also and uh, Sean and the rest of the team there as well. And of course, up in Charlotte, Keith D'Alessandro and our NASCAR Productions TV colleagues who allow us to see all the way around the circuit and also make sure that those of you on the international TV feed get the same images that we are seeing in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre, which at the moment are showing a fantastic performance of Sebastian Bourdais for Cadillac, for Chip Ganassi, and a beautiful afternoon. Air temperature climbing up to 27 Celsius, that's 81 Fahrenheit, and 120 Fahrenheit on the track. The Michelin tyres really getting a workout with the 49 Celsius temperatures there and uh, this surface takes its toll we talked about Jeremy in our Michelin countdown to green the Porsche keys to the race is it tires or fuel and I'm beginning to wonder now uh, which one of those is the limiting factor to the stint then so I wonder if some of those early pit stops have been for the fact that those tires of course were qualified on that they started on uh, today and maybe the drivers just reporting a, a drop in performance there and that's why they've come to the pit lane early yeah it could well be because uh, and here here are the, uh, the two accurate from second and third position of after 30 laps make their way onto pit lane once again they come in absolutely together i'm surprised that one of them didn't try and stay out a little bit you know maybe do one more lap and get the overcut one more lap on the hot tires to take advantage and try and make the pass, but they come in together. Most likely, if the pit stops are, are uh, similar, they'll go out together as well with the number 10 car ahead. It's that will be the hope of that number 10 team. Shea Adam is right there with the two accurate. And similar stops down to a T. Both cars doing driver changes. Tom Block has talked to us about the other day about trying to get out through the RFID readers for Michelin and how tight of an exit it is. Well, we're about to find out. Ricky Taylor, though, in the number 10, Connick Minoltacker, at first one back moving. He easily gets out ahead of the pink Meyershank Racing Acura, but the gap isn't that big. And for new Michelin, it's all going to be down to how those are used by those individual drivers. We've also got an LMP2 car in the pit lane. This is Dragon Speed. Henrik Hedman is not done yet. He's driven everything so far this weekend, except for morning warm-up, but Juan Pablo Montoya has to wait a little bit longer because Henrik's one-hour drive time has not yet been met. Four new tires, not even a drinks bottle for Henrik, and a whole lot of fuel before he goes out and finishes what will be his last into the weekend. And I think he'll breathe a deep sigh of relief once that has happened. Still waiting for the leader to pit in the 
the kitty litter at turn nine and facing the wrong direction the number 57 that's russell ward and winwood racing he was uh, inside the top six he's dropped out of that now he's managed to pull the amg mercedes out of the gravel and he's pointing in the right direction once again great patience by the uh, great patience by race control. Now, that was a really odd one because the car got out of shape coming off the rise uh, to turn seven into eight. And the wiggle took him off the circuit. I, I think he got a little bit airborne there and touched the right curb, then the left curb, and then spun around into the gravel trap that is there to catch the unwary. But at least it stopped him going all the way down the hill. Well done to him for catching it and to get it moving again and great patience as I said Jeremy shown by race control they didn't just go for the big yellow flashy button and we stay green as the leader is in the pitch here Adam is watching Sebastian Bourdais coming to the Chip Canassi team for service Jay. We've just had Patrick Kelly in as well. Fuel and scrub Michelin's going on the 52. His drive time is not yet done, as that has not been met. For Sebastian Bourdais, scrub Michelin's going on to the 0-1 machine as well. Very well scrubbed Michelin's, I might add. They have no sheen on them whatsoever. Waiting on the fuel at this point. It is not time for Renger Van Zander to go play just quite yet. Car comes off the air jacks at 21 seconds elapsed. Sebastian is revving the engine with the fuel nozzle still attached. The car rolled forward about a foot but 25 seconds worth of fuel for the Cadillac, so nowhere near a full fuel, which would be 30 seconds, meaning either Seb is being very economical or else, well, no, Seb is being very economical. Well, uh, keys to the race, Porsche, keys to the race, Jeremy. We talked about the strategy and this short lap, and we heard Brian Sellers telling us earlier on in the Michelin countdown to green how track position is so important here I, I wonder if the Chip Ganassi guys have, have realised that as well they'll know exactly what they're doing that was a great turnaround for Paul Day and he's out well out in front of the chasing uh, Acuras driven by Ricky Taylor and Tom Blomqvist yeah, the gap between first and second before the stops began was 5.5 seconds. That was a lap before the number 10 and the number 60 car came on to pit lane. We'll have to wait and see until they get up to speeds. It's about five seconds now as we go past the timing sector halfway around this lap. So pretty similar there. But uh, it was a good stop by the number 10 team to get themselves out well ahead of Tom Blomquist. And all of a sudden, that gap between the two Acuras that was, well, mere fractions, is now six seconds between the 10 and the number 60. Wow. Into the pit lane for the 96 Turner BMW. Robbie Foley comes to a halt. And the team go to work. Michelin tyres coming over the wall. Watched by Shea Adam. Fuel and stickers for Robbie Foley. He's a lucky boy. He's going to get out there and get to go play a little bit. He was in a bit of traffic behind the number one Palmer Racing BMW and in front of the 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin. So if Turner decided to roll the dice and try and figure out a way to get ahead of them, this was a slight adjustment in the right rear as well when they took the tire off. Now they put the new one on. They have lost a bit of time in their stop because the fuel nozzle came out about four seconds before the car actually got rolling. But hey, if it makes a better driving race car for Robbie Cole, everybody else had better look out. And he's out and away. This is going to start a huge amount of pit stops. Now, leader from LMP2 coming in. PR1 Matheson Motorsport with the yellow stripe in the middle of the windscreen. That's the windshield wiper. Uh, also yellow on the uh, mounts for the side mirrors as well. And this again, Shay, looks like it's going to be full service for this car. Correct, full service minus the driver change because, again, I haven't gotten to an hour yet. I haven't even gotten to 45 minutes yet. And that's why we haven't seen GTD driver changes. But it is a windshield clean for Stephen Thomas as well as four new Michelin tires. So, again, he's going to have to watch out when he goes out onto the circuit because they have no temperature in them. Drop the car off the air jacks now. Still waiting on fuel. No time lost. So, PR1 doing their job to a T. And now, Stephen Thomas is set with quite a dramatic flourish by his mechanic. And he goes. The driver time, by the way, is a minimum driver time that has to be met by the drivers in the pro category, which is DPI. That is 10 minutes, which is why we saw Tristan Nunez out at the first pit stop. Pipo Durrani get in for what we can assume will be the end of the race. For LMP2, it's one hour. 
hour minimum drive time for GTD and LMP3. It is 45 minutes. So, John, I believe we're coming very close to that mark, are we not? Yeah, you, we've passed the, uh, no, we, uh, we're seconds away from 45 minutes. So expect a slew of uh, the P3s and GTDs in because 45 minutes is elapsed right now since the green flag and it is only time on track that counts so if you have been in the pit lane already and there are one or two there Turner Motorsport, uh, Vassar Sullivan that time spent on pit road does not count against your drive time but for everybody else they have now completed their drive time in LMP3 and GT Daytona uh, we've still got 15 minutes uh, for LMP2 Shear has hunted down some drivers who took the start. Where are you, Shear? I've got Roman DeAngelis getting out of the heart of racing Aston Martin, and I will grab him for a chat because he's run in fourth in this race for the last two years consecutively. So I want to ask him what he did to get up to P3. We've also got in the 39 Carbon Racing Lamborghini. Driver change, Jeff Westfall in, Robert McGuinness out. They did this exactly matching to minimum drive time for Robert at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Sega. Resulted in a second place finish for them. That's the rumble of the Aston Martin going back out onto the circuit, waiting on fuel for the Lamborghini. Brendan Reeb is in in the McLaren for Inception Racing. Jordan Pepper is taking over that car his first time in a short IMSA race, shorter than the endurance races. We've got Joao Barbosa now behind the wheel of the Sean Creech Motorsport LMP3 machine. It is Felipe Braga in for Gar Robinson in the 74, which is the Riley Motorsport LMP3. And finally, Ryan Harbick onto the pit lane. That is Jan Halen taking over that machine. And that's uh, all the driver changes we've had so far. So let me go track down Roman have a chat with some of the drivers who have done that first stint now that they've got out of the car and let's see what we can find out about the state of the track at the front of the field. The lead is down to three quarters of a second and Jeremy Shaw that is down to a driver who has just got in and that is Ricky Taylor. He is chasing Sebastian Bourdais for all he's worth. He has got the bit between his teeth, Ricky Taylor, absolutely flying. He just set the fastest lap of the race last time around and one minute 12 Point eight nine nine, which is uh, just about three quarters of a second away from the track record, but uh, a very good lap there at this stage in the game for Ricky Taylor. And that gap all of a sudden now from being six seconds, uh, two laps to go, is now one second between the first two cars. Well, she, Adam said that she was going to capture a driver for us. She has done down at Heart of Racing. Roman De Angelis started the Aston Martin. He's done 45 minutes and a chance for us to have a chat with him and find out how he saw the first part of the race. Shay? Hello, Shay. Uh, we'll come back to Shay in just a moment and get the chat with... Uh, Roman De Angelis, not hearing her down in the pit lane at the moment. John, we just had uh, the all of the LMP2 cars, the cars have just made their first pit stops. Again, as Shea was explaining there, not yet men, the minimum drive time, so uh, they will no, be, not be driver changes yet. Really good first hit for Dennis Anderson in the high-class racing car number 20. He started sixth, worked his way up to third, and re re remains in third after the pit stops. But uh, Stephen Thomas still leads. PR1 Mathis, most of all, still a 1-2 with 25 seconds between those two. And Dennis Anderson has closed the, the gap a little bit. It was well over 20 seconds between the, the second of the PL1 cars and the best of the rest, which was initially Henrik Hedman, but it's now Dennis Anderson. That's about uh, 20 seconds behind in that third position. And we saw great pace from his teammates uh, yesterday, Anders Fjordback in the number 20 car as well. I'll try and get back to share in just uh, a moment or two. New fastest lap of GTD by Robbie Foley, 121.950. As the teams are getting back up to speed uh, after their stops. Uh, let's go to Shea Adam, who's down in the pit lane. Hopefully, you haven't let uh, Robin De Angelis wander off from that number 27 Heart of Racing Aston. <laughs> No, no, he's standing in the sunshine with me. Uh, very nice of Roman to actually talk to us. Fresh out of getting out of the car. Interesting start to the race, but how is your Aston Martin feeling? Yeah, the start was definitely, uh, I think, chaotic's the best word. Um, 
one of the Lexuses in the lane behind us, um, you know, jumped like eight cars in the beginning because one of the P3s in front checked up. So that uh, that didn't really help my my start. Um, I was stuck behind him for quite a while. Um, he was defending and then got a drive through. So that kind of killed my my tire life as well. So um, he was able to wait to was able to catch my way back up to the group in front and, and we had a good stop and now handed it to Maxime to, to finish the job. So hopefully we can get a, a good result here. It's so weird to me to think that Maxime has never raced here at Mid-Ohio before and the conditions right now much more different than they were in any of our sessions, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting the track to be the way it was at all. I think uh, it was a big shocker for everyone. It's super hot compared to, to previously. I'm sure he'll figure it out. Um, he's, he's obviously a really good driver, and that's that's why he's here. So, um, yeah, he's going to, I'm sure, he'll give us uh, a few positions and hopefully get a good result today. So, Are you guys good to the end of this one if we don't have a caution? I don't think anyone expected us not to have a caution by this point. Yeah, I think I think with our strategy right now, we should be uh, we should be pretty okay. It'll be one more stop for sure, um, and then hopefully go to the end. So I'm sure I'm sure something will happen. It's pretty chaotic out there. Um, the fact that there hasn't been a caution yet already is pretty amazing. So let's uh, let's see what happens. Thanks for the chat, Roman. Good luck. Thanks so much. Thank you. Very assured young man, Jeremy. We've seen him develop over the years uh, in the developmental series, actually, of IMSA, starting off in Porsche. Uh, what seems like yesterday, but of course that's several years ago now, made his move into the GT ranks uh, and has really carved himself a very good reputation, and rightly so, very good driver. Roman Dutchess. Yeah, he is. And, uh, uh, a fine young man as well, just uh, really got his head on straight, has Roman uh, had a lot of success moving up through the ranks, but uh, he hasn't, uh, hasn't allowed that to go to his head, uh, and that's why he's picked as part of the uh, Aston Martin uh, young driver development team as well on merit there absolutely uh, some of those um, uh, manufacturer development teams are uh, financially based this one's certainly not for Roman De Angelis and he is uh, proving his worth here and uh, doing did a good job through that first stint a lot of Robert Bester listening and watching in the UK James O'Donnell this weekend, this, uh, weekend keeps on giving uh, Tony Thompson, uh, also Elliot Lindemood, who was uh, at Laguna a couple of weeks ago. He's in California, now tuned in to us on IMSA Radio RS2 via imsaradio.com and the Listen Live. Uh, we're also on Sirius 207. And, of course, uh, if you are outside the US in a territory that does not have a network TV deal, then we paired up. We are the world TV feed. And you can get that via imsaradio.com and the live video tab at the top left, or indeed by imsa.tv. So, Jeremy, Bourdais still in this battle with uh, Ricky Taylor, but it's gone back out again now to 4.9 seconds. Bourdais turning up the wick once again. Just seems to have performance in hand. <coughs> He does, uh, and uh, he's uh, just worked his way superbly through the traffic, uh, uh, and he's extended that lead again now to five seconds, as you say, over Ricky Taylor in second position. That uh, number 10 team, they took the championship lead yesterday because they came in tied on points in the drivers' championship and the teams' championship with the number 60 car, but uh, we're really in second place purely on the fact that uh, number. Uh, 60 car won the first race of the season. They did it first, so to speak, because they each had a first uh, and um, a first place, a second place, a fourth and a fifth. Uh, so it went that down to uh, who, who did the win first, which was the number 60 car. But yesterday, with the qualifying points, uh, they qualified in uh, second place for the number uh, 10 car, third place for the number 60 car. That's 35 points against 32. So that was that tie broken there. But uh, again, the uh, Ricky Taylor, uh, he charged early on in this sit. Has he taken too much out of his tyres too soon? That won't be apparent for another 15, 20 laps, most likely. But uh, at the moment, he's certainly slipping back a little bit from Sebastian Bourdais. Yeah, let, let's not forget, though, Bourdais has a couple of laps in hand on Ricky Taylor because he pitted two laps later than both of the Acuas. Alex Lim was the first in of the leading cars, the DPIs, uh, and he's been out now some 16 laps to 10 laps from Bourdais, 12 from Ricky Taylor, 
and 12 from Tom Blomqvist. That's how the yeah. strategy is playing out. And I've got to keep an eye on this, haven't we, Jeremy? We mentioned it now, Porsche Keys, to the race, because if a yellow does come, you want to be in a position to take advantage of it and take the most advantage of it. So this split strategy that we're seeing, or this differential in strategy that we're seeing, uh, is yet to play out. The stagger has not yet unwound, as they used to say in athletics commentary. So go down to shit out of in the pit lane. Philippe Albuquerque has done some hard, hot work already today, and he's ready to talk to us. Yeah, he has. Philippe, that was quite the start, going from, well, not P1 to P1 by the first turn. How long did you have that planned overnight? Yeah, uh, since I was finishing P2 in qualifying, I was thinking about it, slept about it, wake up about it. Um, it was just perfect. So I really nailed the start and the getaway is the most important part and then the braking as well. So it was everything perfect, to be honest. And I was super happy to be P1. And then in the beginning, the car balance is very good, but I think we're struggling with some rear tire degradation. Um, we are addressing that. So it's a bit better now with the new tires. Uh, let's see how it goes. Ricky seems to be doing well, so we just need to wait and see, but uh, it's still long, one hour and 45 minutes to go. Um, we're in a good position still, P2, but uh, obviously we want to trust the, the leaders. Is the traffic as bad as you thought it would be? I think it's just part of the game. I mean, it's, it's okay. I mean, traffic is always going to be there. It's what keeps us sharp and uh, what keeps the racing nice, so it's okay. Well, thanks. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank you. To hear Philippe Portuguese driver right at the top of his game at the moment. And with an hour and 43 minutes still to go, they're very much in the game. In fact, everybody at the front of the field. Although I have to say, 36 seconds between well, first and sixth, I didn't expect to see that much gap at this stage, Jeremy. No, and uh, Alex Clinton, he's just falling back uh, all the time. He's now 15 seconds behind that. Uh, the, the, the cars ahead of him, Tristan Boccia. But look at this battle for LMP3. All of a sudden now we've got Gabby Chavez uh, just ahead of Rasmus Lind and Felipe Fraga right there as well, looking to go around the outside of the carousel. Wow, that's a bold move. He almost pulled it off, but not quite because uh, Rasmus Lind said, no, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and he uh, just uh, make sure there's not that much room on the exit of that final corner. Uh, to maintain that position, but Chavez is really under pressure here. So number th 36, number 38, 74 heading up into the keyhole and uh, absolutely nose to tail as they go past Robbie Foley in the fourth place car in GTD. Uh, back at the front of the field, I talked about the fact that Ricky Taylor pulled out initially quite a big gap over Tom Blomquist. I think it was about six seconds inside their first couple of laps. Well, that's come right down again down to less than a second again. So back to what Philip Albuquerque was just telling Shea Adam, uh, has Ricky pushed those tires a little bit too hard in that for in, in the early stage? I talked about that a few minutes ago. Uh, maybe now, because it's less than a second all of a sudden between Taylor and Blomquist in that battle for second position. Such a fine balancing act, yes. Jeremy, isn't it? Between performance early and performance late. Of course, you've come out the pits, you're on... A brand new sticker Michelin tyres. They've got loads of performance potential, but the car's heavy because it's at its fullest and therefore it's heaviest with all of the VP racing fuel on board. And it really is a tough thing to know how fast to go. It, you've got to kind of have a metronome in your brain if you're going to be a top racing driver. And things change. And with the track temperature at the moment sitting at 120 Fahrenheit, that's 49 Celsius, that's been... Uh, pretty steady since the start of the race in the air 27 Celsius or if you prefer 81 Fahrenheit There's Stephen Thomas going past the start finish line in LMP2 lead and that is a 1.15.7 That's a new fastest lap of the race for that category. So he's got the performance meantime Battle yeah. for second and third going through as well through turn one. Yeah. Ricky Taylor and Tom Blomqvist through traffic. And that time, Ricky Taylor gets a little better of the traffic as they're heading up now to the keyhole. But now he's held up. Traffic give. Traffic taketh away. It does, John. And it's a fascinating uh, uh, cat and mouse thing, really, at the front there between all of the leaders. In LP2, uh, we're now at uh, 59 minutes. So I think next time around, the minimum drive time will have been met 
uh, so they can the LMP2 cars can, can, can come in and change their drivers. Stephen Thomas, uh, he, he knows the pit stops are coming up, so he's put the hammer down, as, as you just said, a new fastest lap in the class there. He's extended his lead over 23 seconds now over his teammate, Dennis Anderson, another half minute back in third position. But this time, uh, PR1, they've got to make sure they don't uh, mess up their strategies. Last time they kept out their 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 non-pro driver perhaps a little bit too long in terms of uh, handing the advantage to Tower Motorsport, which made their drive, driver change to a, to Louis Delatra, as it was then. This week it's Will Stevens uh, at the earliest op uh, earliest possible opportunity. So we'll watch for pit stops very soon for the LMP2 cars. And there's Dennis Anderson sending his best lap of the race in third position in LMP2. It's Jeremy Shaw with me, John Hindhoff in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Just over an hour has been completed, so that is drive time for all of the classes now having been met. It was 45 for the GTDs. It was uh, one hour for the LMP2s, GTDs and LMP3, I should say, 45, 10 minutes, of course, for the DPIs in the uh, Pro class. Let's take a quick VP Racing Fuel in race update. In GTD, Madison Snow from the pool is back in the front of the class and some four seconds ahead of Team Corthus. So it's taken him an hour after being in that schmozzle at the start of the race. But Madison Snow back at the head and in 17th position overall, back at the head of GTD from Stephen McAlee. And both those drivers have been in since the start, of course. Three seconds, 3.9 seconds between them. Third, Richard Highstand has fought back from that drive-through penalty into third position for Vassa Sullivan, ahead of Robbie Foley in Turner Motorsport in the BMW number 96. And the top six completed by Maxime Martin and the heart of racing, Aston Martin. And in sixth position, Vassa Sullivan, second car, the number 12. That's Frankie Montecalvo. In yeah. Sorry, Jeremy, go ahead. I oh, beg your pardon, John. Uh, the uh, Richard Highstand, though, he has yet to make his first uh, fuel stop of the day, so he Good owes point. the pit stop running in that third position. I looked across and saw the one in the column and completely forgot he'd had the drive through, even though I had just mentioned it. So I'll slap myself around the head as Stephen McAleer comes in from second position. So stand by for the GED stops. Let's quickly run through the in race update. Chavez for Andretti Autosport leads by 3.3 seconds, the 36 ahead of the 38 performance tech one of the front row sitting cars for Rasmus Lind and Philippe Fraga is only three quarters of a second behind those three being slightly sp split up Stephen Thomas for PR1 uh, leads in the uh, 52 in the number 11 excuse me with the yellow windscreen wiper for uh, the LMP2 teammate is 30 seconds behind now Patrick Kelly in the 52 and at the front of the field four seconds pretty much exactly between Cadillac and Acura for Borde and Ricky Taylor. That is respectively the 0-1 and the 1-0. Shea Adam, pit stop time with an hour completed. Here come the cars. For Team Cawthorne, for the spill tires under driver changes, Mike Skeen has taken over for Stephen McAleer. But more commendable, Henrik Hedman's drive time this weekend is finally done. Juan Pablo Montoya being installed behind the wheel of the 81 Dragon Speed. First time in race conditions for him at Mid-Ohio so far this year. Well, because the one hour has just passed. But more importantly, only the second time all weekend. And that was from earlier this morning in warm-up. Montoya is clear to leave. He hasn't yet. They lost after the fuel nozzle came out and the tire change was done, Montoya still had not yet fired up the car and rolled away. But Henrik Hedman, chapeau. That's a lot of drive time this weekend. Shea Adam with our pit stop report after our VP Racing Fuel in race update. Into the meat of the race now, Jeremy. And still waiting for this strategy to play out. But at the moment, it would seem that on a consistent basis, at least through a stint, and one of the things we can look at is stint averages uh, on our uh, strategy screens, but it seems no one really has an answer to Sebastian Bourdais and the 0-1 Cadillac. Yeah, he could put the car on pole position with an opportunity to lap yesterday in in conditions that weren't ideal. There were certainly spots of rain uh, around, but uh, he... Uh, has used that track position to excellent effect, having uh, having uh, uh, lost the lead initially, grasped it back again, and since then 
he has been doing exactly what Sebastian Bourdais can do and does do on a regular basis, uh, pulling away from the field. But the gap again now is down to two and a half seconds. It just ebbs and flows. The last seven or eight laps has been pretty consistent uh, at about four seconds. But uh, I think he just must, must have been a bit of a knot of traffic on that last time around as we see the GTD leader, Madison Snow, into the pit lane. And he'll be getting out so we can have a chat with him. He was pulled. He lost it. He's fought his way back. And it looks like Brian Sell Shit, Adam is jumping into the number one PMR Total Quartz BMW. That is correct. And four new tires going on this car, waiting on the driver change and the fuel. The car comes off of the air jacks. The net should be going across now. There we go. Nice and tight. Door closes from Madison. Brian is told to fire up the car and waiting on fuel as Kevin is giving a little bit of the head nod, saying, yep, yep, I'm almost done. We need every last drop of this to be able to make it to the end of the race. Well, with one more pit stop, of course. Now Brian leaves and he gets a little bit of wheel spin, but manages to get the forward trajectory exactly as you would want it. And if you bear with me for half a second, I'm going to climb over the pit wall and try and have a word with the busiest man in the paddock so far this weekend. Henrik Hedman, sorry to jump in on you. You have been driving more than anyone else in the paddock. Have you been doing laps of Mid-Ohio in your dreams? Uh, excuse me, what did you say? <laughs> have you been doing laps of this track in your dreams? You've driven it so much. Yeah, I dreamt a lot about it this night, but no, I did. It's been fun to, to, to work with the team and try to set up the car, but uh, the track really changed from yesterday, so I don't know, it, it was tough out there. In what ways did the track change from yesterday? I, I don't know, the boys said, you know, already after the warm-up that there, there was no grip, and I can attest to that. Like, the first thing was decent, then the second was, I don't know, sliding all over the place. But, you know, it's the same for everybody, so. We just got to dig down and do our best. If there's a team that can do it, it's Dragon Speed. You're with the right people. Good luck the rest of the day. Thank you, thank you. Great to hear from Hedrick, uh, Henrik Hedman there. Uh, he has been a very busy boy indeed. New fastest lap in LMP2, Jeremy Shaw. And we should have known it would have happened uh, soon enough. Uh, JPM is at work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, the pro drivers are beginning to get uh, behind the wheel uh, now 14.5 he, he turns, the best lap of the race so far. And the uh, lap record, by the way, in LMP2 was a 1 minute 14.584. So his first flying lap on, on Pablo Montoya has taken care of that. It was Matt McMurray who set that time way back in 2019. LMP2 cars haven't been here for the last couple of years. Uh, and it's certainly been a while since somebody as accomplished as a JPM has driven a car around here. So he's got into the groove right away and uh, he's taken advantage of that fresh set of Michelin tyres to uh, set the fastest lap. Now, the key for PR1 Mathis and Motorsports is uh, Stephen Thomas and Patrick Keller have been doing a fantastic job, uh, but uh, number 11 car, Stephen Thomas, he will hand over that car to Jonathan Bomarito, who, of course, has a huge amount of experience in DPI cars. Uh, is uh, the, the teammate for Patrick Kelly is the 16-year-old Josh Pearson, who certainly isn't yet up to the speed uh, of the, the front runners in, 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 at this sort of level, but uh, the, 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 that team needs to... Whoops, there's an, there's an incident. Was that one of the PR1 cars uh, uh, spinning at the carousel? But uh, they need to get, uh, I think, Jonathan Bomarito at the wheel at number 50, 11 car pretty much as soon as they can. It's 52 that goes spinning. That's Patrick Kelly. Yeah, right at the end of the lap and wasn't able to get into the pit lane, but has rejoined and is pointing in the right direction as the final GTD runner comes into the pit lane for his second time into the pit lane. But of course, Shea Adam, just his first stop. The first one was a drive through for that start infraction. Richard Highstand out of the car. And Jack Hawksworth in. He was wearing a nice cool vest when I interviewed him earlier, but very eager to get in this car for his stint. The tires have been changed. The fuel is the last part of this equation, exactly as the Vassar Sullivan mechanics would want it to be. Waiting, waiting, waiting. By the way, these are the boys who work on the 14 Lexus. They just changed the number this weekend. Same car, same everything. Jack Hawksworth out onto the circuit in a car he knows well. On a circuit he knows how to win on. It was a bit of a schmuzzle at the carousel as Jack was coming into the pits the 
uh, PR1 car was going around the front of him. Right behind him as well uh, was Alex Lind for Cadillac Racing uh, involved there as well. I don't think there was a, a touch there. Uh, yeah, that was that, that was a bad mistake there by uh, another mistake by Richard Highstand. I mean, he was probably coming into the pits, but he wasn't clear of the number 52 car. That was just a bizarre incident. He was, um, he was right over to the right-hand side of the track, yeah. Jeremy. You know, yeah. has to be off the racing line at that point, and he's got a bl big blue and white prototype three quarters of the way past him on the driver's side. I, 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 you know, I, I just don't get that. Um, really should have been uh, well aware from that situation. Even, you know, we see people use the... The traffic hitters, the indicators to let people know that they're moving around in those situations. In the old days, in the open, uh, open cockpit cars, you'd have put your hand up to let people you know you can get going into pit lane. Of course, you can't do that with these cars. Uh, let's go to the pit lane where Stephen McAleer had a great opening stint and led the class in GTD. Shit Adams with him now. And John, I think we got our answer on how Stephen got to the front of the field. You've raced in LMP3s before very successfully, so clearly you thought you were just racing with them again, right? Yeah, you know, I'll be honest, that uh, that combined start there is, is something else. I mean, the, the, the back cars in the field, and I've been in the LMP3 car, really hard to get tire temp in those things. So those those first few laps were super dicey, uh, and uh, it was nice to leave. Uh, you know, I'm first time leading in GTD, and then obviously hopefully continue that for the... Uh, for the race, I made a little slip up and Madison snuck by me in the keyhole. But uh, overall, I think we get a great car. Mike's in it now and uh, the pace seems to be good. So we'll see We'll see in an hour and a half where we are. I interviewed Henrik Hedren a few minutes ago and he was talking about the way that the track has changed from yesterday to today. I'm sure you felt that as well, but in what ways did you feel it? You know, Mid Ohio is a, is a special place because the surface is so old. You know, we uh, we usually see the fast laps show up in the morning of these sessions, and it's and that is not the case here. So the laps get better as the cars go on, and uh, the track just gets really greasy. Uh, the Mercedes, you know, we have a, a small understeer, um, really manageable. But if the track gets a little worse, we'll maybe start losing some lap time. But I'm I'm excited. I think we're in a good spot right now. Fingers crossed, Stephen. Good luck. Thanks, you. Yeah, very good point made there. And we talked about the difficulty in getting temperature into the tyres from the LMP3s. Let's pick up the action for second and third place. Ricky Taylor has it. Tom Blomqvist wants it. Yeah. They're both yeah. in Acuras going down to turn six through traffic. They've cleared that now. These two have got a proper fight on their hands, Jeremy, and they've been at it. Actually, since they came out of the pits, the... The gap has ebbed and flowed, but that number 10 car, Ricky Taylor, is moving around a lot at the rear end. It is, John, and initially Ricky Taylor pulled away quite quickly from number 60 car. That's not been the case lately, though. Number 60 has closed in, and both of them are closing, are closing on Sebastian Bourdais. That's Bourdais just heading across the start finish line as the, far, last, the second and third place cars come across through, through that final corner. So there's less than a, well, a couple of seconds, I think, between all three leaders uh, as they head up toward... The, the keyhole on their 58th lap. It's game on at the front of the field between these three cars now. Yeah, that gap, 2.3 seconds, as Jeremy said. In, uh, into the pit lane for the Whelan Cadillac and for Tristan Fortier. That's because we've got a car out on the circuit, and it is the number 38. That's uh, Rasmus Lind, second in LMP3 for, to, three for Performance Tech. This might bring out a full course yellow. It's down at turn six. And immediately everyone's come into the pit lane. We'll get the Shea in a moment. Let's just see what happens here. Risk control giving Rasmus and his team the best opportunity to get that car moving again. And this is going to trigger off a huge amount of pit stops at the front of the field. Shea will come to you now because uh, we're still waiting. It's still green at the moment, but I've not seen that car move yet. Shea. It was a slower stop for the five JDC Mustang sampling Cadillac, but a good one from the Whalen Engineering Cadillac. Pippa Durrani uh, stayed behind the wheel. Tristan Bode, I believe, is still in the car as well. We've got the 0-1 Cadillac in. That is Sebastian Bourdais. The 0-2 is in as well. Their pit stop exit was blocked slightly by the Turner BMW coming into the pit lane. Fuel tires driver change for the 0-2. It is now Earl Bamber. Turner overshot their box significantly, having to roll it back. That is a slow stop for them now in response. It is Bill Oberlin 
in for Robbie Foley, who's been in since the start of this, even though he's already done a pit stop. Both the 10 and the 60 Acuras are into the pit lane. They've already done their driver changes. They are doing fuel and tires for both of those Acuras as well. And now the slew has begun. We have PR1 Matheson in. I see Jonathan Bomarita's helmet, which means it is car number 11. So Stephen Thomas out. Jonathan into that car. We've got one of the two Lexuses, I believe that is the 12 that has come in. Frank Montecalvo out. Aaron Tielitz in. We have the 70 Inception McLaren into the pit lane. Full course caution is out. All of these cars made it in, as did the 36. Jared Andretti and Gabby Chavez shared LMP3 machine. It was Gabby who brought the car in. Yep, that's Aaron Tielitz's helmet behind the wheel of the 12 now. And the Inception McLaren is doing fuel and tires. No change because Jordan Pepper's into the end of this one. Fire the car back up. Waiting on fuel. 20 seconds worth. So about a half tank worth of fuel, John. Anybody who hasn't made it now will not be able to come in. The pits are closed. Full course yellow number one. We've also got the incident between Jack Hawksworth's car, the number 17. It was Richard Highstand driving it at the time, coming into the pit lane. Uh, and the number uh, 52 prototype. Remember, they came together at the, uh, the carousel uh, and... The upshot of that was that the PR1 Matheson number 52 car was spun around. It has uh, regained the track and continued to move. Uh, who does this help, uh, Jeremy, or is it really just a bit of a wash for everybody? Because it's not, I mean, is, is it at the right time for a pit stop for some of these cars? Uh, well, race control made sure it wasn't. Uh, they delayed that as long as they could. They wanted to make sure that the 0-1 car had an opportunity to come onto the pit lane because when that car was stranded down at, where is it, turn six, is it? Correct. Uh, the, the number 0-1 car had pretty much just gone past start-finish line. So if they'd thrown the caution right then, it would have massively disadvantaged the number 0-1 car because the, uh, the the three cars, four, fifth and sixth, had already uh, had the opportunity to come onto the pit lane because they were quite a long way behind the other guys but race control there I think done a really really nice job and so the the uh that there's, it's even Stevens amongst the uh, DPI cars. In LMP2, I think they all just made their pit stops and driver changes in uh, any case. I pre presume number 18 car has made a driver change, has it? Maybe not, actually. If not, that's a, a, a faux pas. In, in LMP3, uh, the, we saw Gabby Char was the which car just came into the pits? 36 car just came in, Gabby Chavez. That was a good call by that team, I think. Uh, Riley Motorsports, however, elected not to bring their guy onto the pit lane. Thank you, Jeremy. So, behind the safety car now. Uh, and absolutely confirmed from the pit lane from Shea uh, that Ryan DL has not yet got into the Aero Motorsport car. That is still Dwight Merriman in that car safety workers on the course at turn number six so we'll see the first opportunity in race conditions jeremy to see this uh, lexus pace car at the lexus grand prix at mid ohio yes and um have to wait and see where the cars are in relation to each other in lmp2 because uh, i i I'm not sure whether the number 11 car was able to, to get a lap on everybody else. I don't think it was, in which case that will not, the, it will, that will not disadvantage uh, Dwight Merriman and that era, t era motorsport team too much. If they are still on the lead lap, they w the pits will be open. They will be able to make that pit stop and, uh, and uh, they'll, they'll lose a little bit of track position. Uh, but well, actually, they were, they were running at the back of the pack in any case, weren't they? So, uh, no, it won't have that much of an effect as long as they, they had not been lapped by Stephen Thomas in the class lead. I think the fact the number 11 car came onto the pit lane right before the caution came out would have saved them from doing that. So, waiting for the pit lane to open in this full course yellow. It's going to share Adam down uh, on pit lane. Uh, who's ready? Is anybody ready? Jeremy's gone through the fact that most people have just pitted or, or got in before the full course yellow was called by 
race control. The pass around is starting uh, at the moment. What are you seeing on the wall? I can see Bill Riley's boys and girls up on the wall for the 74 LMP3 machine and they're uh, dark black and blue and orange fire suits. We've got Era up on the wall as well, needing to do their driver change for Dwight Merriman over to Ryan Dial. And unless somebody stole Ryan's helmet, has basically the same structure uh, and is wearing his helmet, then they have not yet done the driver change. And also we've got Windward up on the wall for the Mercedes fuel and tires ready if they get ready to go. Hi guys. And uh, Carbon are up on the wall, but I'm not entirely sure that they're gonna come in. And if they do, it's gonna be fuel only. Okay, thank you. So I'm breaking this up into almost exactly uh, halfway through the race, Jeremy, in terms of what we've got left. An hour and 20 gone, an hour and 20 minutes to go. Yes, indeed. Uh, and so fr from here, if you make a pit stop now, uh, you're still, you, you're gonna need, what, to be an hour and 20 minutes? What's that? 80 minutes. Yeah, you could just about do that on a stop of fuel. So um, from here on in, I think uh, the DPI cars, I wouldn't expect any of them to come in right now. Maybe at the back, uh, the, the last couple of cars might come in just for a splash, but they've only been out for a couple of laps. So I don't think there's really much point. They should be able to get to the end of the race from here with just one more pit stop. And the same, I think, most likely well for lmp2 that's a little bit more tricky because some of them have been in quite a while ago and others more recently uh so they can do around about you know 40 minutes or so for the lmp uh two cars uh and uh, the, the ones that came in first number 81 will definitely come in now i would suggest um and probably number two probably all except the number 11 car actually uh, we've got a car moving very slowly, and it is the caught off machine, the number 32, that is offline, coming back towards the end of the lap, and it looks like the left front wheel is not on that car properly, or oh, there's been some damage to the front. That's a fantastic piece of driving by Mike Skeen. Uh, either he's, uh, they have not fastened the left front wheel on properly and it's had an issue or he's got front suspension damage. Shea Adam is down there, uh, left hand side, so on the pit wall side of things, Shea. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump over the wall to get a better view of it. He is slowly blocking the 33 Sean Creech racing uh, machine. That's the LMP3 of Joao Barbosa, the championship leader, just trundling down the pit lane. But an excellent bit of driving for Mike Skeen. They pulled the old left front off. Let's see if they're going to do any additional work to it or just put a new Michelin tire on and send him back out. New Michelin is on. Car drops off the air jack. Mike is sent. So that must have been a tire issue for that car. Surprise down the pit lane, John. We had the 0-2 Chip Ganassi race and Cadillac back in. That is Earl Bamber. Now, his egress was blocked by the Turner BMW. He was just on the pit lane before the caution came out. Splash of fuel only for that car. Yeah, exactly as I suggested there. If you're at the back of the field in DPI, just come in, put a couple of gallons of fuel in, uh, on board. It'll give you a little bit more extra, uh, a little bit less fuel you'll need on your final stop, perhaps. So I think uh, you know, that that's why I would suggest the number zero two car was onto the pit lane, but everybody else, they should be good to go from here with just one more pit stop. They'll be able to run uh, pretty much flat out, I think, to the end, even if there are no full, more full course cautions. So let's take an in-race update. Renga van der Zande leads in this VP Racing fuel rundown. Cadillac racing behind the safety car. Ricky Taylor in second for Conning and Minolta racing. Third is Tom Blomqvist for Maya Shank racing. All of these DPIs, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 6, 0. In comes the 27 Harter Racing Guard. This is the GTD stops. We'll bring off from that VP Racing update for Shea Adam to give us a rundown on what's going on in the pit lane. Fuel and okay. tires for everyone so far in on this 
first off, we've got Turner with fuel only, but fuel and tires for Carbon. Turner's going to jump everyone and get way back out. Ahead, the 12 Lexus also doing fuel only. First of our tire and fuel, Paul Miller Racing BMW for Brian Sellers. Then comes the Aston Martin of Maxime Martin. Then the Tecumet Mercedes. No, the Carbon Lamborghini's fighting him for position. Sorry. Nope, Carbon needs to stop because the Mercedes was already in the fast lane. That was his right of way. Thankfully, he did get better. Jeff Westfall drops back into fourth in line of those cars. That was the sound of the Porsche revving. Fuel and tires for Jan Halen. That's a dangerous thing. Yeah, Jan has been set on stun as the pit stops then have gone through for the GTDs. Uh, with an hour and 24 minutes to go, Jeremy, I, I, I don't think they can quite go that far, but it's going to mean a very, very short splash and go at the end for those GT Daytonas. It is, yes, uh, that's exactly right. An hour and 15, yeah, they can't do that that much on uh, on one stint, uh, but um, they should be, you know, if you've got a full tank now, it means you, you need less to get to the end of the race when you make your final stop. So I think that's probably why we're seeing the number 96 car on pit lane. That was in just a couple of laps before the caution period. The interesting one, there's two cars that did not stop there in GTD, Ryan Eversley in car number 51, uh, and number 17, the uh, Lexus of Jack Hawksworth. Uh, that's, uh, you know, Jack's shown really good speed this week. Uh, he's now back on the same strategy as it, well, different strategy as everybody else because he did not come in to the pits right now, but he will, will need a, a, you know, one more stop that will need more fuel than the other contenders in GTD. It's Jeremy Shaw, who's with me, John Hindhoff, in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Lovely to have your country. Final wave by is off and running company, even, and, and your country. If you want to hand me a country, that'd be lovely. I've always thought that I should be an heir to some uh, far flung throne. Um, uh, probably not, though. Uh, we were running down the VP Racing Fuel in race update before we go back to green. Let's go to LMP2 where PR1 Matheson Motorsports number 11 is back to the front of the field ahead of high class racing with Anders Fjord back in the red and white number 20 and Juan Montoya. Oh, this should be... Uh, get the popcorn in, settle back. Juan Montoya with a sniff of the lead and Dragon Speed's number 81 in third position in class. The top three in LMP3, Gabby Chavez for Andretti Autosport. That car was on pole position. Riley Motorsports kicking them Honest with the number th 74, with Philippe Fraga and Dakota Dickerson for MLT Motorsports in 58 car in third. And at the front end of the GT Daytona field, it's Ryan Eversley who cycled to the front for Rick Ware Racing. Jack Hawks within the number 17 Vassar Sullivan Lexus, despite the fact that that car had a uh, stop. Oh, had a run through the pit lane uh, for a starting infraction is up the second but remember they were the last ones to stop just before that full course caution was called team caught off in third mike skeen now he's been uh, in and out again let's see if that resets but he's still at the moment scored in third position ahead of bill orbelin for turner motorsports uh, aaron tealitz for vassar sullivan in the 12 lexus and Paul Miller racing down in sixth position for Brian Sellers. Coming back to green shortly, I would think. Uh, Shea Adam uh, has been watching the tyres and our Porsche keys to the race, Shea, all about the strategic positioning of the cars, uh, the track position, how you use the yellows, tyres and fuel. Well, everybody got fuel, but not everybody in that GTD battle got tyres. No, correct. The first car on the racetrack that took fuel and tyres, that would be Brian Sellers. Everyone in front of him, if they came down the pit lane, took fuel only. And Mike Skeen is coming back into the box, I believe. Oh, no, I turned around. I didn't see him behind me. The team was waving the pit board. Uh, but it was just a tire issue for that Mercedes. The suspension is OK. But maybe now they're coming back in to change the other three Michelins to make it an even set. Thank you very much indeed. Hello to Brian. Red versus R. How quickly can you get the WeatherTech race up on podcast so that I can re-listen to my on my seven-hour drive back from mid-Ohio? Glad to tell you. Brian, that uh, there's plenty of content from the weekend in mid-Ohio already at imsaradio.com. But Tim Gray has taken over in London now and he will turn round 
the uh, races as quickly as possible. Just a splash of fuel for the number 32 Shea. Did they go to work on the tyres as well? I'm pretty sure it certainly was a loose wheel on the front end of that with some tyre damage as well. But just a splash, I reckon, for the court of Mercedes AMG. And the three new Michelin tires that they also had ready to put on the car. It was just a splash of fuel for Jan Halen, though, who came back down the pit lane after pitting when it was open for the GTs. Just that little bit of extra fuel. They might try and stretch this one, you know? Looked like the sidewall was split on that as if he'd run into a curb on the side of that uh, original left front tire that they took. But they've made, a, uh, made a, I suppose, made a virtue of, uh, of the... Uh, made a virtue out of that necessity, uh, Jeremy, and come back in with a splash of fuel, getting down to an hour and 10 minutes. They're not going to be far away from getting to the end of the race now in that uh, number 32 caught off motors AMG GT3. Yeah, but that car didn't look to be up to speed down the back straight, did it? Um, just just uh, that now. Was the, that was the time. It? No, that was the time before when it, uh, oh, it, it came in for the single tyre. Uh, OK, fine. Yeah. Fine. But... Um, yeah, no, we're only we're an hour and nine minutes remaining. One more caution period, they could probably get to, to the end from here. Whether everybody else will is questionable. In, in LP2, by the way, the number eight, 52 and 18 were trapped a lap behind uh, during that caution period. So they are a lap behind the rest of the contenders. We go back. Do we go back to green? Yes, green flag at the front of the field. And Renga van der Zand is going to have to get on with it very quickly because Ricky Taylor is right there, weaving around left and right. Tom Blomp is trying to get heat and pressure into his Michelin tyres. They're side by side into the keyhole and out of it. It is still just Renga van der Zand with the rear end of the Cadillac. Very twitchy indeed. As they head down through the kick at turn three, he steers to the right-hand side side of the track the Acura pulls out gets alongside gets ahead and is on the inside for turn number five the left-hander he's pushed off the track just a little bit they're still side by side scrapping for the lead this is like a street flight Oops. and it's running into the back and it's going to come right away across the the oncoming traffic that was the Renga van der Zander in the 0-1 just tapped the back of Ricky Taylor's car and he was the one who lost control down to turn six. My goodness, he was lucky not to get picked up by the rest of the field. That was robust driving. That will be looked at. And in fact, we're being told as well uh, that the number 17, this is the second place Vassar Sullivan Lexus, will have a drive-through. That was... Of course, not the driver who's in the car at the moment. Uh, that was the starting driver, and that was for hitting the PR1 Matheson car. Side-by-side -side action, two prototypes, Jeremy. Neither of those drivers, neither Ricky Taylor uh, or Renga van der Zander, were about to give up position. No, that was fantastic driving between those two. But uh, let's have a look at this. There's a replay as they're coming down to the end of the back straight. Uh, super late on the brakes there is Ricky Taylor around the outside and this is where they start pushing you know, pushing and shoving each other I think first of all there's a shove from the 0-1 car then there's a shove from the number 10 car and finally the number 0-1 car just uh, uh, spins out there uh, yeah the stewards are going to look at that one and uh, it's going to be a really interesting call to see what uh, what they make I was talking to Trent Hinman this morning about the incident yesterday. There was some, some, some really close driving between various contenders out there. Uh, and the race control has basically told the drivers, race how you want to be raced is what it boils down to. I don't want to, yet, the race director, Bo Barfield, said, I don't want to make any calls. I want basically you guys to police yourself. He's said that for several years and he stresses it as often as he possibly can. Uh, and those who were just leaning on each other there, Heck it's of a going to be really interesting to see whether there is a, uh, a a call on that because it is under review in race control and uh, yeah they were, they were both shoving each other at that stage heck so, of uh, a, I can't wait to see the call on that was a toughie heck of a piece of driving by Tom Blomqvist who had to check up to avoid the spinning Re Renga van der Zander the reason that van der Zander spun and hit the back of Ricky Taylor's car with his left front was he dropped the right rear Michelin off the edge of the kerb and that pitched him sideways. I thought originally he'd stuck his nose in there and initiated the contact that way. That was not the case. It was the right rear Michelin. I'm happy to correct that. It was the right rear Michelin going off the kerb. He'll say he was ushered out there by Ricky Taylor opening up his hands and letting the car run out. 
And of course, Ricky Taylor will say, it's my corner, I'm on the racing line. Now, in Europe, I, I think that would be a uh, no call. Here in the States, and particularly it's also in no Inter call, no action. Really? No call. Wow. And that's why, because they were literally on each other there. Uh, if, if it had been a one-sided move there, then uh, there would definitely have been a call. Sebastian Bourdais just left his pit, walked back to transport it, disgusted quite clearly with whom at this stage is not uh, totally clear, but probably uh, Ricky Taylor. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think you know, that, that was a toughie because they were leaning on, on each other. And it wasn't as if the uh, number 01 car was pushed off the track that caused him to spin. He spun because he, he tried to dive it down the inside uh, into turn six, uh, and he didn't get it done. So uh, I, I, I think, I personally, uh, my, my call is that the race control made the right decision there. Uh, could, really hard racing between those two. Ranga van der Zender came off worse there, and he's a pretty clean driver. I mean, he's not a oh, yeah. dirty driver, generally speaking, so I'm not casting any aspersions here on anybody. And Ricky Taylor certainly has been involved in a fair number of scrapes over the last couple of years. But I think that was just hard, good hard racing between those two at that particular point. Uh, and Renge van der Zender has now got a lot of work to do because he's 11 seconds behind that battle now. It's Ricky Taylor who leads the race. The, the reason I said over here it might get a penalty was the, the rule over here is normally you have to leave a car's width for the car that's behind you. And Ricky Taylor didn't do that. And that's why I thought that might get a call. He eased across uh, and uh, I did not leave a Cadillac's width uh, for Renga van der Zander. And that was evidenced by the fact that the reason that Renga spun was he had his right-hand wheels on the grass trying to avoid contact. But it's a no call, and that's how it's it's been it's been called out. It's great. It's a talking point. Uh, I, I, Shea Adam would be very brave if she sticks a microphone under Sebastian Bordier's uh, hand, uh, head, uh, helmet later on, or underneath his chin. But it uh, is it, it's happened, and that car now has to make its way back. Ring of Anderzander now 18 seconds off the lead and the fight back uh, for the 0-1 Chip Ganassi Cadillac begins right now good opening stint for Stephen Thomas in the prototype category Shea Adam is with him now Stephen you really wanted to lead this race didn't you that pass on your teammate was clean but then you drove away yeah thanks I appreciate it it's a great great track here and I really wanted to get out in front because if you're in front then you can dictate the race and you can be the one that makes the decisions in traffic instead of relying on a P2 car in front of you. Very good point. Jonathan Bomarito into the end of this one. What kind of car does he have beneath him? Does he have a race car capable of winning? He does. Tim, our engineer, gave us a great race car. It's good in a straight line. It's good in the curves. You know, and Jonathan Bomarito, I mean, he's one of the great sports car drivers of all time. So I'm, I'm happy to hand it over to him. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks so much. Tell you what, what a battle. We've got a GTD now. We've got all the cars, all the cars, nose to the tail. That, that's going to be an incredible scrap. Lead lap, they're all together. And uh, boy, there's going to be fireworks there potentially in GTD, John. Uh, a new fastest laps of the race, by the way, the last couple of laps. Uh, the, uh, the fastest lap has come down appreciably. Two laps ago, it was a 1 minute 12.7 for Tom Blanc. It's now at 12.26. That number 60 car. That is within a tenth of a second of, yeah, of Kevin Magnussen's lap record set last year. 112.188 for Kevin Magnussen last season. Uh, Ricky Taylor has just had his best lap of the race on lap 71, a 1 minute 12.77. So Ricky Taylor out front by eight tenths of a second. Coming to the line now. Battle in LMP2. Fjord back with Juan Montoya. Yeah. Following him. Nothing between them at the moment. No cars between them either. Heading up to the keyhole. The red and white number 20 in second place. Leader in that class, Jonathan Bomberino, just mentioned by Jeremy, putting in his fastest lap. That was a 14.5. These guys lapping in 15.4s, but they did have some traffic to go through and into the pit lane for the number 7.4. The Riley 
Motorsports leash here for Felipe Fraga, and that was fuel only. Shea's just told me in my ears. Thank you, Shea. And that's the car that, that was he just taken the lead as Felipe Fraga is running second at the restart, took the lead from Gabby Chavez, and now makes uh, his pit stop here. He'll still need one more pit stop before the end of the race in that car number 74. Great gaggle of GTD cars all heading up to the keyhole <laughs> and with the leader of the race overall coming through them. Danger time here for Ricky Taylor and I think people Durrani has just sneaked through on the... No, it was Earl Bamba who's uh, just sneaked through on Blomqvist, I think, there. I think Pete durani has gone through as well. Yes, he has. They've both gone through. So Blomqvist, who was in second, is now down to fourth position in the overall category, and that's all down to negotiating the traffic in the early part of the lap. It looked like a Monday morning commute, and the young Maishank racing driver has lost out there, so it's people to rally up to second in the number 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac third is Earl Bamba for the 0-2 Cadillac racing car now fourth Tom Blomqvist and this will wow. not be helping them getting back towards the leader either Jeremy yeah what a shuffle around that was uh, the uh, as they come across to complete the uh, 73rd lap 1 minute 16 0.9 for the race leader, so four seconds lost in traffic as they negotiate that huge long string of GTD cars. And as you say, a big shuffle around number 31 car up into second place. Pippa Durrani uh, is under pressure now from Earl Bamba heading into the keyhole. These two with a bit of traffic, uh, with a, a bit of clear traffic, rather, no traffic ahead of them as we're under one hour to go now. Ricky Taylor's lead is 3.3 seconds for Connie Minolta Acura in that number 10. So what happened to shuffle that around? Well, quite simply, there was a whole host of GTD cars uh, that were in the mix. Uh, Richard Westbrook also getting a little bit of uh, hip and shoulder from some of them as he's fighting his way through that same gaggle in the number five. Yeah. He's just going into Thunder Valley now. It's been a struggle for number five team uh, again uh, this this day, this weekend, really, uh, as the, uh, they, they haven't been able to match the pace of the other Cadillacs by and large. And Richard Westbrook, he's running in fifth place at the moment because Frank van der Zandu is still trying to make up for that uh, spin that he had down at turn six uh, right after the restart, after that uh, brilliant lunge down the inside, outside for Ricky Taylor at turn four. But uh, it's going to be, he's going to be fighting back now. But this battle for second position, people Durrani, Earl Bamba, Tom Blomquist. Uh, and in the meantime, Ricky Taylor has checked out at the front four seconds now. The gap for Ricky Taylor looking for his, uh, his uh, fourth win in five years here. He won in 2018 and 20 with Elio Castro Neves. He won last year with Philip Albuquerque. Intervening year, it was uh, Juan Pablo Montoya and Dane Cameron in uh, their Penske uh, Acura that won here. So four wins in a row for Acura, and Acura out, of, out in front again now after the incident between that pair. Meanwhile, Juan bon, Pablo Montoya up into second place. He's got past Anders Fjordback, uh, and he's now going to try and chase down Jonathan Bomarito, and he has... Uh, uh, but Fjordback has set... No, he hasn't. Scratch that. The fastest lap in the class has been set by Juan Pablo Montoya, 113.73, the old record, a 14.5. It's Jeremy Shaw, I'm John Hindhoff, and we're in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Uh, Shea Adam is reporting from the pit lane here at Mid-Ohio. We've got 57 minutes exactly left. Let's run through the classes for you. Ryan Eversley for Rick Ware, racing with yeah, a... Yeah, hats off to them. Yeah, they've done a, cr a, a, a really cracking strategic job Remember what we said about the Porsche keys to the race with strategy. That car does owe us a pit stop, Ryan Eversley. But uh, it is, however, leading at the GTD field at the moment. And uh, they've only been down pit lane once to uh, most everybody else's uh, two or three times, depending on how the strategy's going. 
Uh, on how the penalties are, actually. Uh, well, ex exactly true. Um, he has been in that car 54 minutes now, or if you prefer, 20 laps, of which eight were under full course caution. So they uh, used the opportunity there uh, to make up the uh, make up the ground and take track position. And pretty much any time now, they could make their last stop. But the problem is that some of the people around them uh, made their stop only 10 or 12 laps ago. I, d I don't think they can go all the way. The likes of Bill Oberlin, he's been out there for 12 laps. For Turner Motorsport in the 96 BMW, Brian Sellers, he's been out there for 12 laps. They all stopped at the uh, end of the last caution. Uh, can they go all the way to the end? That will be the question that everybody's asking ourselves. We had a fuel mileage run at the end of the Mission and Pilot Challenge yesterday. I won't spoil it if you haven't listened to it yet. It is on at the archive, the free archive to listen to at imsaradio.com. It's worth listening to. That was a cracker. 90 minutes of green flag racing at the end of that one and it really boiled up into a superb race. Are we going to get something similar here? Uh, we've been... We split the race in half, really, with uh, about 15 minutes of full course caution at around about half distance, but just the one intervention by the new Lexus safety car. In LMP3, Colin Brown for Court Autosport leads it, has the fastest lap of the race now. Three seconds is the difference between... Colin and Gabby Chavez is taking over the Paul Sitting Andretti Autosports Ligier in second and Garrett Grist for Junior 3 Racing in the 30 car is just seven tenths of a second behind. That's boiling up nicely too. Bomberito, oh, sorry Jeremy, go ahead. Well, let me just say, add a quick but in there. Felipe Fraga has made uh, one more pit stop. He'll still need one more before the end, but uh, don't count him out even though he's running in fifth position at the moment, John. Sorry about that. Yeah, because he'll need far less fuel. That's what Jeremy is talking about there. The fuel tends to be the determining factor of how long these cars sit on the pit lane because the teams are so good they can change the driver and even change tyres long before they need a full uh, long before they can get a full uh, set of a, a full load of VP Racing fuel in uh, Bomberito leads Montoya by eight and a half seconds in LMP2, that's the number 11 PR1 from the Dragon Speed at number 81 and at the front of the field it's two and a half seconds between Ricky Taylor in traffic at the moment going by Colin Brown at the carousel uh, and he has people to run, he set the stun behind him, he's trying to close down and took about four tenths oh no, uh, Took a little bit more than that. 13-9 for Durrani last time. 14-6 for Ricky Taylor. That's the VP Racing Fuel in race update. Shay Adam is down in the pit lane with another interview. With Tristan Nunez, teammate of Pippo Durrani, we know that Pippo's been set to stun at this point, but how badly does Action Express Racing, Will and Engineering, want to win this race, especially considering it's been accurate dominated for the last four years? Yeah, we are doing everything in our power to, to get a win. Uh, we've been, been close all season, uh, a little bit of a rocky start, but everything's coming together. And, uh, you know, our Action Express Wheel and Engineering Cadillac is on rails right now, so it's looking good so far. The car was handling well at the beginning of the race. I'm assuming you seemed happy with it when you got out, but what kind of a development has the car done over the race to make it better for people now? Yeah, I think j just every year we come here, it's just about uh, being as fast as you can and managing your tires. So, um, you know, Pippo's doing a great job with that right now. We'll see how it is at the end of the stint and make adjustments if needed. Yeah, fingers crossed for you. Good luck. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's going to be a lot of people, Jeremy, I think, with fingers crossed to have uh, in that pit lane because there's still plenty to play out here. Um, we have the advantage of being able to uh, look back to the start of the race and see just how everybody did in DPI uh, with regards to uh, their pit stops. Full green stint for Ricky Taylor in the number 10 was just 34 and a half minutes or uh, 28 laps. Uh, people uh, to he, he can go more than that. Yeah, I he think so. 37 laps or 46 minutes. That's more like it. That was people to Rani in his full green lap stint um, and uh, I think that's a, a little more representative don't you of of what we think these cars can do and with 51 minutes to go that's going to leave them 
uh, a little bit short, not quite a full stint. The question will be for me, Jeremy, tyres, two, four or none when they come in for their splash of fuel, assuming it's a green flag stop at the front of the field. That's something we're going to have to watch for, isn't it? Agreed. Yes, indeed. Uh, and Ricky Taylor has just turned his best lap of the race so far. Not the fastest lap. That was set by Tom Blomqvist about uh, nine laps ago. But Ricky Taylor at 112.666 for the race leader. Rega van der Zander running sixth in the class. He just turned his best lap, 112.720 in kind of zero one. But he's still uh, 10 seconds behind Richard Westbrook, who turned his best lap uh, what uh, just two or three laps ago as well. Yeah, this is this is riveting. Uh, hello to all of you sitting on the outside of the hill at turn five up at Madness. Nobody's moving, and I'm not surprised. Uh, plenty of you listening on headsets. I know we've had some lovely pictures that you've tweeted in at IMSA Radio. If you want to get in touch, Sirius 207. If you're moving around in the US, or you can get us uh, on the internet as well. www.imsaradio.com. Either hit listen live and go to RS2 or if you are outside the US then you can grab us on the World Feed TV with our commentary and our play-by-play -play call uh, and that is via the live video tab on the top left-hand side of the homepage on imsaradio.com by the way if you look further ahead you will see all of our live broadcasts for upcoming IMSA races and if there's a little TV symbol next to it that means that we'll have some sound and vision for you starting to look ready for pit stops down on the pit lane i've just seen uh, in reed helmeted up in that red white and blue or white red and blue uh, helmet that uh, is very recognizable down in the pit lane he'll be jumping in to replace ryan eversley in the Nertic ODT, Rick Ware Racing uh, NSX, which is still at the front of the field. This has been a long, long run for Ryan Eversley, and they are well inside where they can take this to the end. A little sneaky yellow now would be absolutely brilliant for them. Well, uh, if they make their pit stop before the yellow in particular, yes. That's what they really need, though, because they need more fuel than most of the other contenders. Everybody has to stop in GTD. Uh, but number 51 car, I would say bring that car in uh, pretty soon, just in case there in is. In the pits now. Oh, in the go. pits now. It does have the biggest fuel capacity, the NSX, uh, so it will yeah, take it, quite a long thirsty. time to fill it. Yes. Well, it, yeah, they, 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 what they do, they do equalise the, uh, the fill time for each of the cars. So, uh, yes, there's a big discrepancy in how much, uh, what the size of fuel tank is. There's also a differential in the fuel flow that is allowed per car as well. So it all kind of evens out in the wash. That's the plan, anyhow. Well, Aidan Reid was suited and booted, but only changed the drinks bottle for Ryan Eversley. He's going to go at the end. And Shea Adam, we've got Tom Blonkvist in, in the Maya Shank racing car. He came in with just under 49 minutes to go. They must think they can get home from here. Was that a full stop for the prototype for the DPI number 60, Shea? It was full service fuel tire strength bottle for the number 60 Tom Blockfist already back out. We had the number 12 Faster Sullivan Lexus in two fuel and tires for Aaron Tielitz and a slow stop for the 51 Rick Ware Racing Acura. That now gets moving again. 47 seconds stationary in its pit box. The maximum time should have been 40. It was a stall for Ryan Eversley as he tried to leave. Yeah, and then it would refire rather annoyingly for Ryan. So, Jeremy, there's the dice rolled in our strategy from our Porsche keys to the race. Tom Blomqvist and my Shank Racing in the Acura, the number 60, out with about 47 and a half, 48 minutes to go. They might make it from there, might require a little bit of fuel saving, but what's this going to do to everybody else's mindset? Do they have to cover this off at this stage? Um, well, they don't want to be caught out by a full force caution, that is for sure. But uh, it's, it's from here, you, you, I think they can get to the end from here. We saw last year a long final stint in this race by the DPI cars. So, yeah, they could probably get it, but uh, a full course caution would certainly be helpful for them. Oh, dear me. 
there is uh, Aiden Reed really holding up number 31 car there, just not getting out of the way at all. That cost people to run an awful lot of time. Let's go back down to the pit lane and share. Adam, I, th I, I think I got that wrong, Shay. I don't think it was a stall now on that number 51. Unfortunately not. I thought it was too, John. So I saw the car start to move and then stop. The fuel hose was still attached. That's going to be a drive-through penalty for leaving your pit box with equipment attached. We do now, by the way, have the 02 Cadillac Racing. That is Earl Bamber's car. The crew guys are up on the wall, but they're not holding tires or the fuel hose just quite yet. Perhaps they like the view a bit more from standing rather than sitting. Uh, that is so annoying because the strategy had been okay for those guys and they have uh, just a little slip like that again it was part of our Porsche keys the race no penalties Jeremy and yeah okay they were gonna you know they were on a different strategy to everybody else they needed a little bit of help but my goodness mate they've really not done anything to further their cause there. Just a little bit of miscommunication. Very easy in the heat of battle, isn't it, in the pit lane to just get something wrong and Ryan pulled off uh, just a little bit early. Yeah, that's uh, really unfortunate for that team, but <laughs> tell you what, there's still a bad, tremendous battle going on there. I thought Shea said that Aaron Tulitz had been on the pit lane. He's shown on my scoring, he's still in third position. Um, so, no, I don't think he's been in uh, yet. Uh, so he's in third place. So it's uh, Bill Oblin, Brian Sellers, Aaron Tielitz, uh, Maxime Martin, Jordan Pepper and Phil Ellis pretty much nose to tail the top six cars in GTD. And that's the two BMWs obviously at the front, then Lexus, Aston Martin, McLaren and Mercedes. Nothing to choose between them and about three seconds back to the Jeff Westfall Lamborghini. Sure, here's the rest of the DPIs. I'll check to see which Lexus it was on pit lane as you tell us what's going on on pit lane. Two Cadillacs are in for service fuel and tires for both the Chip Ganassi car, that's the 02 Cadillac racing machine, and the Mustang sampling Cadillac, that's the number five. Fuel and tires for both of No drinks bottle for either Rick Westbrook or Earl Bamber. These two old foes who used to battle each other in a Ford and a Porsche, now we're going out to battle with the same machinery underneath their wheels. And let's see, little bit of trouble getting the 02 moving, but Earl knocks it into gear, and once again, forward motion is found. That's those two pit stops done and dusted, and the pit board has just come down. Pippa Durrani has been called into the pits, which means the only DPI stop we've yet to have other than that is the number 10. And guess whose pit board is down? That would be Ricky Taylor's for Konica Minolta. Both of these cars in the pit lane now, both of them with the bright headlights creeping down in the fast lane, making their way all the way down to the box. For Ricky Taylor, it is the third box on the pit lane. For Pippo, it's about the ninth, so slightly different distances to go. Ricky hits his marks first. Let's see. Fuel and tires for both. Fuel and tires for Ricky. Fuel and tires for Pippo. Those are slightly scrubbed Michelins going on Pippo's machine. And oh, a new drink bottle. I think that's probably something caffeinated, if I had to guess. For Pippo Durrani, it is exactly the same for the 10 with slightly scuffed Michelin. Ricky came in first. He should leave first. Let's see how close these two cars are. Ricky is down and away. Pippo is still waiting. Now Pippo goes. And the drive through has been served for the number 51 Rick Ware Racing Act. Pippo goes out behind a different actor than he came out with. And it was Jack Hawksworth who came in to the pits a few laps ago. So Jeremy, spot on. Aaron Thielen has not yet visited. He still runs in P3. Yeah, well done, Shea. Uh, that uh, was two laps ago for Jack Hawksworth uh, in the expected. car. So that okay. explains that it was the Lexus. It was the wrong Lexus. Uh, side by side, three wide with the McLaren, the Inception McLaren. I haven't talked about that car uh, too much. The number 70, Jordan Pepper in that car. His former teammate, Jules Gounon, defending the Bathurst 12 hours title. Great victory as well for now the uh, US domiciled, but very much still expat Aussie team. Uh, the Sun Energy one and Kenny Abul. They took the we're in the slightly uh, fog-affected 12 hours at Bathurst in the early hours of uh, this morning over uh, 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 time zone here. And uh, great race it was. And uh, so Jordan Pepper will be delighted that Jules has defended that championship. And Kenny Abul, who we've seen here in IMSA competition down through the years, uh, very, very emotional. 
after that victory for the Sun Energy 75 EMG Mercedes. A, a track that, well, for any Australian who is who cares one scintilla about motorsport, Mount Panorama Bathurst means a lot to him, but it has particular relevance to Kenny. And we wish them all the best and send them our great congratulations. Thanks to uh, Creelsey, Matt Nolte and to Garth Tander, who was in the booth, keeping my seat warm for next year, I hope. Either that or he can let me drive his Audi next year on the mountain. I don't mind which way that works. And to uh, Chad Byrony and everybody else down on the pit lane. Spent a bit of time in the early hours catching up with that today. Been a big weekend of endurance racing and we're ending it up in style here with the Lexus Grand Prix here at Mid-Ohio. 40 minutes and 40 seconds of this WeatherTech Sports Car Championship event. What a great IMSA weekend we've had. Little bit of interruption by the weather yesterday, but it hasn't really spoiled our enjoyment. In from second, Jonathan Bomarito in the LMP2 number no, 11. He was leading. He was leading, he, yes, of course yeah. he was. Montoya will go through and assume the lead, but also some pit stop, I think, Jeremy, doesn't he? Cor correct. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Anders Fjordback was in uh, last time around in number 20 car. Just the three cars on Agreed. the lead lap in, in LMP2. Fuel and, and that's as a result. Yeah, and that's the result of the uh, timing of their pit stops right before that caution period ah, yes. uh, came out. Yeah, we've been green since then. Seven laps uh, of caution for a stalled car uh, out on the circuit. 15 minutes in total. Nice stop again for the number 11. Piawa Matheson locked out the front row with their two bloom, uh, blue and white, blue and silver cars. Jonathan stays aboard that. J Bomb will take it to the end. Now, in GT Daytona, what's happening there? Well, answer, the two BMWs, which have been quick here all weekend, are quick now, and they are at the front of the field. Bill Oberlin, by three quarters of a second, did the yellow and blue turn a BMW. That is the number 96. Heading towards a tackle dinner tonight if they win. That's the tradition from Will Turner and the team. Uh, but Brian Sellers for Paul Miller Racing looking to spoil the party in the dark grey, white and red Total Quartz Lubricants car. And where's the number one? And coming onto the pit straight now, across the line, those two BMWs, the newest of the GT3 cars in GT Daytona. So new, in fact, and so popular around the world. We're talking about Bathurst, there's been GT3 racing in uh, Italy this weekend for the European Le Mans series, in France for the GT3 European Championship and plenty of other places as well. Paul Miller Racing couldn't even get their car for the Rolex 24 Daytona. It didn't arrive till just before Sebring. And they have turned that car into a winning machine, Jeremy Shaw, very quickly indeed. Long time with a different manufacturer. It's not a small decision to change manufacturers for a, a team, even a team as accomplished as Paul Miller Racing. They've had a lot to learn. All their data had to go out the window. They've had to start again. But my goodness me, they've got onto it and got up the pace very quickly indeed. Have already got a tick in the W column. Yeah, impressive, isn't it? Uh, and uh, yeah, that car you know, struggled for BOP performance in the first race at Subing. Imsa didn't quite get it right for that one with that brand new car, but uh, they got it right since then. But the BMW has certainly been very, very strong these last uh, few races. One, as you say, at Long Beach for Paul Miller Racing. And Turner Motorsport, they've been right there in every race as well. Just had a few little things not go their way. It didn't go Bill's way yesterday either in the uh, Pilot Challenge race, but he'll be looking to uh, set that record straight here today. And in from the lead of the race, Renga van der Zander had a scant 25 second lead. This is the equivalent pit stop to what we've seen the rest of the competition in DPI. Shea Adam is down there and this is a crucial stop for the Chip Ganassi's team, Shea. 
fuel and four tires. Chip Ganassi boys and girls know how to do pit stops. They know how to do them very well. Ranker not even taking a new drinks bottle. Leave me alone in this cockpit. He's probably thinking, wow, super short fuel. Away goes Ranker. Where is this going to put him out? Well, Pippo Durrani just went by on the front straight, but he's going to beat out Richard Westbrook. Good stop for the 0-1. Yeah, uh, Ricky Taylor has gone through, uh, Tom Blomqvist has gone through, and Pete Durrani has gone through as well. So I think that's going to be fourth position on the rejoin for that Cadillac. Uh, where is the 10 uh, answer uh, heading into the S's now? And through towards turn nine, over the top of the hill there in to the pit lane for Juan Montoya. This is the stop, Jeremy. This is the equivalent stop for, for Juan. And he gets the, the wave out. So where's he going to slot back in? Jay Baum and Anders Fjord back, I think, have gone through. Yes, they have. And they're heading up towards the top of the hill. Here is the 52 Josh Pearson car coming through. Turn one, and we'll skip to the outside. That's the one with the yellow windshield wiper turns into, uh, sorry, no, that is the number 11. That is J-Bomb, so that is the lead. That is the lead on track, I reckon, as Pearson's yep. just come into the pit lane. So yep, the 52 right. just come into the pit lane, excuse me. Yeah, and the number 81 car, one Pablo Montoya, he stayed out uh, three laps longer than the J-Bomb before making that pit stop. Uh, he was four seconds behind before Bomberito brought the number 11 car into the pits. But now Bomberito, he's got those fresh tires, those uh, warm tires now on that number 11 car. He's going to try and stretch that advantage as he, if he can before Montoya gets his Michelins up to temperature and is able to really put the hammer down in the closing stages of this race. So it'll be the run to the chequered flag in LMP2 as well. This is turn up the gas, really. This uh, is all getting a bit... Interesting again now. I mean, we barely had a moment to consider what is going on here, Jeremy. At the front of the field, Ricky Taylor, seven seconds, uh, and he came into the pits at some, what is it now, five, six laps ago. Blomqvist was in a little longer back. He's done uh, now eight, ten laps. Ah, this is still all to play for at the front of the field. In fact, it's all to play for in all of the classes, to be honest, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but uh, Taylor's pulled out a pretty handy lead now. He's got to almost six seconds over the uh, second of the Acuras, and Bonkus has got to be on fuel save compared at least to, uh, to agree with Taylor. That. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but he, he do, Blunkus does have 3.7 seconds in hand over Pippa Durrani, the best of the Cadillacs, and he in turn has had six seconds over number five car. And uh, the number five car certainly uh, made good use of uh, that pit stop. He's uh, into fourth position now, uh, but he's only just ahead of both of the Cadillac racing entries and Chip Ganassi cars in the 0-2 ahead of the 0 when they're nose to tail pretty much those three cars battling for fourth place. Yeah, Tom Blomqvist, just to add to what Jeremy's saying there, he's going to have to go something in the region of 48, 49, possibly 50 minutes, depending on when the flag, the white flag comes out. Uh, with 33 minutes to go, he's already been out there 15 minutes so he's at a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of the fuel burn and we have seen however I, I will add this Jeremy we have seen and you mentioned Ricky Taylor has pulled out 3.7 seconds at the front of the, tip, the the field but he has to be careful that he's got some performance in his Michelin tyres at the end of the race just in case he does get some kind of challenge from either Tom Blomqvist or more likely Pete Portorani, who is on exactly the same fuel strategy in the Cadillac. You do not want to overheat those tyres for the sake of information. The air temperature has dropped a whole degree Celsius to 28 Celsius. That's uh, just 82 Fahrenheit now. But the... Tra but the, the track temperature has been absolutely solid at 120 degrees Fahrenheit 
or if you prefer, 49 degrees Celsius since just before the start of this race. And that is quite simply because, Jeremy, we've not had a cloud in the sky uh, yeah. for the last two hours and, what, 10 minutes or thereabouts. And so the sun is still just beating down. I know this is an old surface. I know it's not a very dark coloured surface, but that grey track will stay to that temperature until the sun goes in and it's yours. No, no sign of the sun going behind anything at the moment until it drops down over the horizon. It doesn't, does it? This battle in LMP2, we've just got a replay there of the number 81 car coming out of the pit lane just ahead of number 52 car, but heading up the hill toward the keyhole, uh, the momentum of the number uh, 11, excuse me, 11 car for PR1 Mathis Motorsports was able to, to, was able to go past and grasp away the lead. Uh, but now Montoya's got that car up to speed again. There's only a second or so between them in a battle for LMP2. And uh, Anders Fjordback actually lost a bit of time, lost a lot of time in that last lap because he was only seven seconds behind on the previous lap. He lost about four seconds on that last lap, did uh, Fjordback, the day in, in the uh, in the number 20 car for high class racing but uh, he's still you know he's still in the mix so to speak but a good lap time's been turned there by the uh, two leaders Jonathan Bobrito 114.4 the last time around his best lap in this race a 114.1 the old lap record by the way was set by the uh, also in, in a PL1 Orica Matt McMurray a 14.5 so they're certainly well sub previous lap record pace in LMP2. Wicker Bill's just tweeted in at uh, RSL Studio and said, Fan fascinating race, where's the last two hours gone? Yeah, I completely agree, Bill. Uh, probably a good idea to remind you now, because I've got a feeling we're going to get even more excited and have to give you even more information in the next half an hour or thereabouts that uh, straight after the chequered flag whilst that ends the race it only starts the conversation Michelin post race tech exclusively live on RS2 IMSA radio we'll have some driver interviews we'll take your questions on the original that listener led audience led show at IMSA radio hashtag Michelin PRT if you've spotted something that we've missed, if you want to make a point, ask a question, clarification, not just on this race, right across what has been a very successful weekend, again for IMSA here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Close for the Lexus Grand Prix. Then just drop us a line, please, at IMSA Radio, hashtag Mitchell and PRT, and stay with us on RS2, whether you're leaving the track here in the car or... Uh, further afield well, that wind up the international TV feed of course, the world feed but giving you the opportunity to continue to enjoy what has been so far a brilliant race and I do feel as though I almost want to say light the blue touch paper and retire because it just feels like the the big rockets and the ground mines are still to go off yet and we have not had the big finale so stay tuned. Thanks to all of our listeners and viewers. Great to have you on board. And we can't do what we do without your support. The numbers that uh, you bring to, bring to us is part of the success of IMSA Radio that President John Dernan was talking about earlier wow. on. Cross the line. Ricky Taylor now down to up to four seconds rather in that uh, battle for the lead with Tom Blomqvist caught in traffic Shea Adam down in the pit lane Shea Adam what's going on down in the pit lane go ahead I just walked down to LMP3 World, John, because they're all pitted together, and I'm wondering, does our LMP3 leader, the core autosport number 54, owe us a pit stop? Because their crew guys are, well, chilling. They're not looking like that car is going to come back into the pit lane during this race. Uh, it's been out for, I reckon, 35 laps at the moment. So coming up to an hour. So I would think, yes, they do need a pit stop, but probably not for another five or ten minutes. Three, uh, three full course caution laps at the beginning of that. Uh, 31 minutes past the last hour was when uh, they last pitted, I reckon, Jeremy. 
Uh, yeah, I think they can do maybe maybe as much as 50 laps, uh, probably an LMP3 car on a tank of fuel around here. Um, not sure where that leads leaves them. What are we now? 26 minutes remaining. How many laps have he done since he came in? Where's my notes? Uh, sorry, I've just, I've just moved was in on, on that. Lap, yeah. uh, 57. So he's done 35 uh, laps. So he's got another. Yeah, it'd be close, but uh, I think it'd be a bit of a struggle for them. Just look at the uh, the front of the field. Oh, uh, what I was going to say was the gap between the two actors had come down. It's now extended itself on that last lap. 4.4 seconds then between the two. Uh, Acura is at the front of the field. One minute, 12.8 for our race leader, Ricky Taylor. That's within two tenths of a second of his fastest lap of the race. So really good lap there by Ricky Taylor. He's got that gap out to 4.4 seconds back to Tom Blomquist. Third position, Pipo Durrani. He's another eight seconds back and slipping back uh, uh, incrementally uh, in that third position. But still clear of that battle between the other three Cadillacs. Richard Westbrook just ahead of Earl Bamba and Renga van der Zander. And after that uh, spin by van der Zander, he was able to, uh, he, he was about 10 seconds behind. Wow. But a good stint he made before he extended that last stint and then coming in, needs a lot, needed a lot less fuel, of course, at that stage. And so he's got himself back onto the train of those two Cadillacs ahead of him, including his teammate. So that's going to be pretty interesting, interesting to see how that uh, Cadillac racing team, whoops. Oh. Coming. That's a spin for the leader. Yes, it was a spin for the leader in LMP2, Jeremy. The number 11 car coming out of the keyhole was involved with something that went on there. There was a whole gaggle of cars. Oh, it's Montoya down the inside has nerfed him and turned him yeah. right around. Yeah. So Montoya will get a penalty for that. Uh, he was up the inside and then just kept his foot in and basically used the front end of the Dragon Speed car as a snowplow and pushed the leader out of the way. Great bit of driving by Brian Sellers, who had to check up. I th did Brian lose the lead there? There was a car right alongside him. Just have to check out. Yes, he did. Ooh, I'll tell you what, that was the uh, the race leader as well was almost caught up in that. Uh, sorry, it was the Winwood car. That was not Brian Sellers. Excuse me. That was the Winwood 57. Thank you, shit. Phil Big Ellis. For Ricky Taylor, John. Yeah, Big he was right there. Ricky Taylor. He had to almost come to a complete stop. And Montoya, he came from a long, long way back there, didn't he? It was an opportunist move there from what JPM. Uh, that that uh, that was probably the under clearest. Review. Yes, I, I, I've I've no doubt it'll be under review. I don't think it will take that long to uh, work that one out. Uh, Ricky Taylor's lead of four seconds is gone. down to less than one second. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that well, under review, again, is, as Jeremy says, and uh, that might well be the end of what has been a pretty decent run, actually, for Dragon Speed and Elton Julian's team. Uh, a drive through now would be extremely costly for. That number 81 car. The 11 car of Jonathan Pomerino holds on to its second position, believe it or not. Uh, and the top three is split by 12 seconds and 12 seconds in LMP2. Uh, meantime, uh, side by side contact a lap or so ago from the Kotov AMG Mercedes and Jan Halen in the uh, 16. Right Motorsports car. They're battling over seventh and eighth in class. And Mike Skeen, remember, had that cut tyre mm. earlier on with the, the hole of the sidewall that had been gouged out as somebody had, had run a box cutter down it. Must have been an yeah. edge of a kerb or something. And they, they are first and second in the season long championship, those two. And they are battling it out fairly robustly. Yeah, I mean. I don't call that respectful driving. What we saw yesterday in the Michelin Pilot Challenge race was good, hard, clean racing where they gave each other just enough room. They were there was some, definitely some leaning going on there, <laughs> uh, and it's uh, it's happening rather too much for my liking, at least. I I, I like to see good, clean, fair racing, and uh, certainly from my perspective, uh, the Porsche ushered the Mercedes off the racetrack at the ex exit of turn six. 
I'm not sure that was necessary. Yesterday we saw McAleer involved with the battle with Fikitu, who's with now, one of the other cars in the pilot Chand race, and the two of them went side by side all the way through that section. Five I think corners. A couple of laps in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really five crazy. corners up yeah. from. And there was none of the ushering off no. the track required then. Uh, from turn four all the way through turn nine. It was absolutely magnificent yeah. to watch. Uh, Ricky Taylor in that traffic. He goes up the inside of Juan Mont uh, Mon Montoya, uh, who that's, that's the leader in the overall, the leader in LMP2, heading down through turn three. They've just passed the number 70 inception McLaren. Jordan Pepper, fifth in oh, GTD. Richard Westbrook. Westy has Richard... dropped down to sixth position with a slow lap yeah. last time around, a 118. Yeah, he, he got overtaken by both of the uh, of the uh, Ganassi run Cadillac racing entries. Uh, so they both managed to get past him, but presuming traffic somewhere. But uh, those three had been running nose to tail to tail. Now, just the wrong, right there. But Ricky Taylor, he's he's got his boot in again, and he's extended that lead back out again after that scare when he had to jump on wow, the brakes yeah. at the exit of the keyhole to avoid the spinning Jonathan Bomarito. Uh, and uh, what's the incident res responsibility? Yeah, uh, drive-through penalty for the number 81 car for Juan Pablo Montoya. So uh, and here he comes now serving that penalty. Yeah, that was possibly the least difficult decision that uh, race control uh, will ever have to make. Uh, they could have been back in Indianapolis, which is where JPA was yesterday, and still called that one, it was so obvious. And just a little bit of over-enthusiasm from Juan there. Stuck his nose in, and I think that the, the part of it that would have really caught the eye of race control was the fact that he just kept his foot in when he made first contact. And uh, just rotated the Jonathan Bomarito PR1 car. Now, what I've got to work out then, I, I, has he got in and out without give, giving up the lead in no. class? No, OK. No, I think he'll drop to third place in the class behind Dennis Fjord back as well. I, 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 yes, I'm sure he will. Right, the 81. Fairly sure he will. <laughs> OK, got to check out the number 11 the next time uh, around. Jonathan was about 12 seconds, 13 seconds. Uh, behind, and now he should have gone through. Yes, he has. So you're right, Jeremy. There was 24 seconds between Juan and Anders Fjord back in third place in the red number, the red and white number 20. Uh, so we'll check them as they go across the line this time around. Starting to get that phenomenon, 20 minutes to go, by the way, of clumping. Somebody needs to write a dissertation on this and some kind of theory because it, it doesn't matter how many or how few cars you get in in multi-class endurance racing we've got 31 here around 2.4 miles but it doesn't matter whether it's 66 and declining at Le Mans or 130 and declining around the Nürburgring we do always seem to see this phenomenon of cars in big bunches clumping Paul Trustwell called it a few years ago Really interesting, and around here where it is difficult to pass, we're, we're seeing it most obviously this weekend as Richard Westbrook carves his way through. Yeah, past the inception McLaren there. He's got himself up into third place as Jordan Pepper. This is the car that's set fastest lap in, uh, in three of the four races this season. I think it's Jordan who set the fastest lap at uh, Daytona. The last two races is Frederick Shandor. Uh, who uh, set the fastest lap at, at both at Long Beach and WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. They didn't come away with the results that they really wanted from those two events, but Jordan Pepper, having taken over from Brendan and Reeve in this race, is doing a nice job to uh, get that car up into third position. He's, he's overtaken Aaron Tielitz, uh, I think, maybe it might have been last time around, actually, uh, I think, to, to get up into third place. And then Maxi Martin in the heart of racing Aston Martin is right behind Tielitz now as well. That's Jeremy Shaw. He's with me, John Hindoff, in the Hagney Global Broadcast Centre. 17 and a half minutes to go. Let's get ourselves sorted out here because we've still got plenty to be decided. Our VP Racing Field in-race update sees that three seconds is the gap at the front of the field between Ricky Taylor 
and Tom Blomqvist. That's the number 10 and the number 60 Acuras. They have eventually come back to the top. We expected the Acuras to be good here, and they have been. The car that was really taking it to them was the Cadillac of the 0-1 Chip Ganassi team, Renga van der Zander and Sebastian Bourdais in particular. They're now 21 and a half seconds back after contact took them out of the running. People, Durrani's in third, so he's the best of the Cadillacs for the number 31 red and white wheel and engineering machine. And he is 12 seconds behind the battling Acuras at the front of the field. And between him and Va Van der Zander, Earl Bamba is flying the flag as the best of the Chip Ganassi cars. He's another six seconds further back, but he's got Van der Zander right with him now. In the LMP2, Jonathan Bomarito for PR1 Matheson leads by a scant 1.8 seconds over one Montoya. They've already come together once, and Montoya has had to do the drive-through for that, but he's right there again, under two seconds behind. That's the 11 and the number 81. The 81 is the white car with the... Evil Knievel style stripe with the uh, stars on it down the middle of it. Anders Fjord back is seven seconds further back for high class racing in the red and white number 20. In LMP3, Colin Brown for Core Autosports in the number 54, the Tangerine and White Car has ten and a half seconds over Garrett Grist for Junior 3 Racing. The two Ligiers battling away there and told from the pit lane that they think. Core Autosports, Colin Brown, who's been saving from the start of his sin, could go to the end of the race in 15 minutes' time. That would be extraordinary if that's true. Bill Oberlin and Brian Sellers are having a cracking scrap at the moment, and Jordan Pepper is right on the back of it. Top three in GDD, going over the rise at Turn 9 and into Thunder Valley, and they are absolutely together. 96 Turner BMW, the blue and yellow car, the dark grey Paul Miller Racing BMW number one, and Jordan Pepper in the dark red and black number 70 McLaren into the final couple of corners at the carousel and then onto the last left-hand kink. And that's your top three together, absolutely together, as they head across the start finish line, or the finish line, should I say, and into turn one. That's your VP Racing Fuel in race update with things hotting up in all of the classes and particularly Jeremy Shaw in that GTD category. Shocking, huh? Uh, <laughs> it's not a headline maker, is it? No, Close it racing in GTD in IMSA yeah. is not really a headline maker anymore. No, but ju just look at lap times is interesting of the uh, GTD contenders at the moment. The fastest laps in the class uh, are in the uh, the 21s. Uh, the last time around was 24 uh, for each of them. Uh, I don't know whether they were held up uh, by by fast the cars going past but certainly the GT, GT cars tend to lose less time being lapped than the leaders lose the GPI cars lose in lapping the slower cars uh, because they're able to sort of just judge where the prototypes can go through uh, more, 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 more easily but uh, yeah 24 then so a couple of seconds away from their fastest times tyre where that's probably a factor at this stage in the race. We heard Brian Sellers talk to Shea Adam about that before the start of the race. Yeah, very true. Now, Michelin countdown to green. Uh, it isn't as abrasive here as a couple of weeks ago at Michelin, uh, excuse me, at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca, for the Michelin tyres. You can't underestimate how slick this gets around here in the heat that we've had today. Uh, 118 Fahrenheit on the track now, or uh, 48 degrees Celsius. It's dropped um, a whole degree Celsius and two in the Fahrenheit scale, so absolutely nothing at all. And, of course, when the cars are sliding around, people think, oh, well, you know, you're not wearing your tyres. If it's, you know, if your car's not... No, if, when you're sliding around, you're getting even more heat into the surface of the tyres, and that peels off the rubber, Jeremy, and that's where the grip is disappearing towards the end of the stints. Yeah, true, true that. And uh, the, the other factor here is fuel, of course, with Tom Blomquist in that number 60 car came in uh, uh, quite a long way before the number 10. Uh, one, two, three, four laps before the number 10. Uh, I think he had to save some fuel. I think he's probably been now told now to, to go for it, perhaps, because he's closed right in again on Ricky Taylor. He had some problems with traffic on that last lap. 
It was a 17-3. He'd been lapping very consistently in the 13s, had Ricky Taylor. So it cost him a lot of time. And that lead that was pretty comfortable now isn't. Uh, and meanwhile, in GTD, coming into the carousel, one, two, three, four, uh, and... Uh, and five is Bill Oblin, Brian Sellers, Jordan Pepper, Aaron Tieditz, and Maxime Martin. Uh, you know, do you know what? That's a decent lineup in any form of motor racing, isn't it? Those drivers. What experience, speed, and excitement we've got there with respectively two BMWs, then the McLaren, then the Lexus, then the Aston Martin. Uh, Jeff Westfall is only another five seconds further back in the Lamborghini Huracan. Plenty of manufacturers represented and plenty of talent behind the steering wheels of those cars. And that one is the top five in GTD, separated by a couple of seconds, if that. And they are forming up. This, remember, we've... I'm not going to say what I was going to say about what we haven't had and how long we haven't had it since. This is the race coming back together. Absolutely what we like to see. The ebb and flow of an endurance race, a multi-class endurance race, doesn't need any artificial means to make it exciting. It's absolutely perfect. And we've got 11 minutes to go, Jeremy. Who's got yeah. the fuel? Who's got the grip? And who's got the will to try and make one of these difficult overtakes. Same again in LMP2, where the two protagonists who came together a few laps ago are back together at turn six, and here's Montoya again, round the outside, and again he hits the leader. With a little shoulder barge there, they were in behind the number 74, Felipe Fraga, and Montoya and his uncompromising style, he's never been anything different. He was exactly the same at Indianapolis yesterday on the road race. We've seen it from the very first time he came into the sports car ranks as well. But that again was a very robust pass and a hip check on the number 11. Uh, that is the That was the leader, Jonathan Bomarito, who was being respectful for the car he was coming to lap around maybe he was being a little bit too conservative jeremy but that again was hard love from jpm no love uh, it was just uh, uncompromising as you say that was the word he picked it perfectly john heindhoff and uh, uh, I, i'm not sure why he needed to to jink into the side of the number uh, 11 car as well at that point because he had the momentum through that corner but uh, he was just making his point there I guess was JP I mean I guess he was maybe he was upset with what happened earlier on I don't know but uh, if he gets away with that okay fine uh, we'll see uh, whether race control uh, wants to have a look at that one as well but uh, but boy there's some just tremendous battling going on here all the way through the the field and again once again the two leaders are back together uh, once more but as are the top five cars in gtd I, I think jonathan might be saving a bit of fuel jeremy's been out there for 23 laps whereas montoya has only been out there for 20 laps so there no, might be that, that, that's there shouldn't be any fuel concerns okay i don't think for either of those two okay well let's see what happens at the moment we haven't heard from race control that they're uh, looking at that pass now they look, should be able to do 30 you know 30 how many laps they've done since the pit stop uh 20 24 for jonathan yeah, they, they, and they, 20 they, for they, 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 they could do they could do well over 30 uh so that, that shouldn't be an issue for, for those guys i don't think eight with only what uh, eight minutes remaining in this race for so six laps maybe, possibly ricky taylor seven tenths of a second between the two accuracy tom blomqvist is coming had to deal with a bit of traffic there as he went through turn nine on the far side of the track. It is the Lexus Grand Prix at Mid-Ohio for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. We're live on Sirius 207 and around the world on IMSA Radio, RS2 at imsaradio.com. Sound and vision for our world feed as well. On imsaradio.com, top left hand side of the page and at imsa.tv and this one is getting very interesting indeed. Still nothing from race control about the incident a lap or two ago. Philippe Fraga just holding up the leader a moment for a moment or two. Round the outside at turn number six. I don't have a problem with that, but then it's Montoya, Montoya turned right into the car leading the uh, Jonathan Pomerino leading the track. There's definitely a move to the right there from JPM. That cannot be allowed to stand. 
There was no need for yeah. him to turn right there at all, and there was definite movement to the right well, from the Dragon Speed car. That's uh, that is unfathomable. Yeah, I, I mean, whether he was anticipating the number 52 car turning it to the left hand kick there, of course, they're going to take that turn yeah. seven to yeah. the left hander. They're going into that. Uh, and Jonathan Bombrito is, is, is about to turn into that corner. The credit, but uh, the, wh whether or not Bombrito was going to leave him room is now a moot point because, as you say, the contact was at, pretty much at or even before the turn in point. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure the race control is going to look at it. It hasn't come up yet on the race control feed that I'm seeing, but uh, I don't know. It, it was certainly. I don't think it was necessary, let's put it that way. He, he, he had the momentum, he had the inside line, uh, but he was just making sure that Bomberito wasn't going to challenge him back again. Pre preemptive, uh, preemptive yeah. strike there from uh, yeah, Juan Pablo Montoya. Uh, uh, shit, Adam, has an LMP3 update from the pit lane with six and a half minutes to go, shit. Our championship leader, the number 33, Sean Creech Motorsport Car, just coming into the pits, a splash of fuel for Joao Barbosa. So when did he pit? Who pitted with him? And who in that category is not going to make it to the end? Oh, that's a good, that is a good yeah, point. He, he's he's uh, a, a lap off the pace in any case, so you know, that's not really relevant to, to the leaders there in uh, LMP3. I reckon the, the stint that they could do about... Uh, the good information I have, the LMP3 car should be able to do 50, maybe 52 laps if they really stretch it. Uh, that and, was 50 uh, round. on the nose. No, that was no, 50, 50 on the nose. Yeah, 51, 51 now, I think, for Colin Brown. We've got five minutes remaining. That's going to be a real tight. I think it's also going to be very, very tight for the car that's just moved up into second place in GTD. That's the McLaren of Jordan yeah. Webber who has got past Brian Sellers. But uh, he's already done 53 laps uh, in his uh, GTD car. And that's longer than I, than, than I was reckon that anybody could get sure. in a GTD car. There's still five minutes remaining yeah. in this race. Yeah, the, the point that Chase making there is just about the fuel consumption, not whether the 33 is in, in with a chance, Jeremy. They, they did an hour and 10 minutes, which was um, 50 laps on the nose with three yellow flag laps uh, at the start of that and how that compares with the guys around them. And Core's already done. Um, 52 with the same three laps at the beginning uh, of that. So they've now been on track out of the pits, albeit with three yellow flag laps for Colin Battle Brown for at the lead. start. For, a... for lead in GTD, coming off the keyhole, the BMW gets a good run off the corner, but uh, the McLaren's got a run on him coming down the, down the hill. He's going to dive to the inside. Jordan Peppery certainly looking to maybe dive down the inside. There he goes, down the inside of the BMW into turn four. Can he hold that position? Yes, he can. Change of lead in GTD on lap 110 for those cars. And here comes Sellers down the inside of, of Arbolin, too. Not able to make that move, John. Wow, great racing in GTD. Yeah, so just to finish off that point with the 54 car before we hit that action, um, Colin Brown has now been out. Uh, for one hour and 15 minutes, uh, albeit with the same three laps of caution that Joao Barbosa had at the beginning of his stint. So they, they are doing a cracking job. Colin Brown must have been put on fuel safe the moment he went out. You can't yes. make your mind up to do that halfway through a stint. That's really good driving by Colin. If he's going to get to the end in another four minutes, that will be awesome. And they're clearly going to roll the dice from here. They will have been doing for the last few minutes. Meantime, this GTD battle continues. Jordan Pepper is the man on the move, as you heard from Jeremy Shaw a few moments uh, ago. And the Inception McLaren now leads, having done 55 laps uh, on that tank of VP Racing Fuel, but had uh, seven laps of yellow at the beginning of it. In terms of its time itself, uh, they've been out for an hour and... Wow, an hour and 20 minutes in that car. That is extraordinary for those guys. So they surely must have given the green light to Jordan. A cough and a splutter here. Could be extraordinary if they can get to the end from here. And there's only three minutes left to go. I think the BMWs are saving fuel behind them, Jeremy. I really do. Despite the fact that they seemed to be on a better fuel strategy. Although, tell Bill Ober than that. Let's not... Well, Bill surely does not want to go for a repeat of what happened yesterday in the Michelin Pilot Challenge. 
but this is very tight indeed for all of these drivers. Inception McLaren from Bill Orbelin in the Turner Motorsport BMW from Brian Sellers, who's right there as well. They're separated by under two seconds. And Aaron Tielitz for Vasa Sullivan. And the Lexus is only another second further back, as is Maxime Martin. That top five split up a little bit, but still there. If there's a cough or a splutter or a wheel thrown off the edge of the circuit, this could all change yet, Jeremy. Yes, yeah, certainly could. Uh, but what a drive this has been for Inception Racing. They've been knocking on the door. Uh, they've shown really good speed in all of the races this season, and they've put it all together here to get themselves up in the lead of the class. Just two minutes remaining now. Where are the uh, race leaders, uh, the overall race leaders? Because I'll determine how many just, more laps they have to Just do coming down to turn to three to now. Race. Just coming down to turn three now. So they are behind so, that battle. Uh, they, I don't think they will lap them, but that does right. mean that that GTD battle will have to go the lap that the leader is on because they are not going to slow up those first and second placed Acuras. There's nothing between them now in terms of traffic, and on the track, there's just about a second between them in terms of real estate and time. They go through the S's at the moment, and Ricky Taylor for Conica Minolda Acura has just on one second. Now he's got some traffic ahead of him, and he'll have to negotiate the uh, Lamborghini Huracan of Carbon with Perrigan and Jeff Westfall. He's a wily old campaigner, though, Jeff. He'll stay out the way into the carousel for the penultimate time. It'll be white flag this time around for the leader. And there it is, 2.4 miles to hang out now for Ricky Taylor. And into the pit lane, harder racing from... One of the top positions, that was fifth position in GTD. So the GTD battle, two seconds of fuel for Heart of Racing, Aston Martin. And remember, the GTD battle is in front of the leaders. They've not started their last lap yet. There could still be drama there. Here, they, here comes the leaders now. Possibly the best thing that they could do is lap this GT3, GTD battle, and that's what they're doing. Bill Orbelin is right on the tail of Jordan Pepper. Maybe he wants an extra lap. He's trying to hold the leader back. He doesn't want to get them in between, which is exactly what's happened at turn six. So we are on the last lap for GTD as well now, as long as Ricky Taylor can get by the Inception McLaren. Maybe one more chance for Bill Orbelin. Can he follow the leader through? He's right there at the moment. That traffic has stymied Tom Blomqvist. He will not get anywhere near Ricky Taylor now. It's going to be Conninger Minolta that win it. It's going to be the number 10 Acura that comes through to win. And behind them, the GTD battle is still raging on, but it's going to be Inception. McLaren taken from two BMWs. Wow, what a race at the end. And once again, IMSA has got the balance right. They've got the strategic calls right that they asked the teams to make. It's not easy for them to balance out exactly what's going on in the race. Montoya with a questionable pass for the lead. You've got to say that. That's not been according to the race channel. I can't see that that has been looked at yet, but I'll hold that. Uh, 81 penalty was ages ago. So that was the original one. That has not been looked at. A fortunate victory, I think you've got to say, for the 81 car, and there will be some very unhappy people in PR1 Matheson's pit, particularly Jonathan Bomarito. It'll be Colin Brown who comes home to win in LMP3 for Core Autosport. He has now become the holder of the Richard Westbrook Award for driving with pink fluffy slippers on. That's extraordinary. The mileage he's got out of that car and Jordan Pepper in GTD, as we described. Shea Adam is down on the pit wall with Philippe Albuquerque, teammate to Ricky Taylor, who brought the car home. He played his part earlier on, Shea. <laughs> down here congratulating everyone and anyone but congratulations to you Philippe two years in a row two races in a row first repeat winners how's it feel awesome I mean Ricky just pull it out again it was just so hard in the beginning with the car balance I was just went straight to the engineer tell him like what we should do what can we do to help him Ricky and in the end he was so happy with the car so I got really re I'm more relaxed when he said the car is good like okay so if the car is good we are in control um, 
Yeah, and, and he pulled it out brilliantly. Like again, that T5, it was a decision like exactly like last year. I mean, I think again it was just hard battle, which is always is in IMSA, and pulling out again. Like the boys did an amazing job on the strategy, on the car, and uh, on the calls that we did on the setup. So coming on with a exacting uh, event like last year, P2 in qualifying and race win, it's just beautiful. Congratulations, you know the way to the podium. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> wow, 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 Jeremy. What a cracker again. Brilliant racing. Two Acura's first and second. We might have called that. In fact, I think we probably did call that early in the week, but it was the manner in which that happened. Shame we didn't have the... Van der Zander and Bourdain, 0-1 Cadillac to challenge them. They finished 37 seconds away in fifth. It was their teammate in fourth, the 0-2 car. But on the podium, Pipo Tarani and the 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac team, 16 seconds away. And the two Acuras just two seconds apart at the end, running across that GTD battle, did not help for the chasing Tom Blomqvist there, Jeremy, but what a win for Conning and Minolta and Wayne Taylor Racing. Absolutely tremendous drive uh, by them. I mean, uh, yeah, it was a... It, look, uh, that the contact between the two of them down turn six, it was uh, it was unfortunate, probably, but, but what a lunge it was down the outside by Ricky Taylor into turn four. Around the outside, he drove of the Cadillac and uh, from there he's got the advantage I mean they were side by side over the top of in six down to seven uh, and uh, he, he made the move in my book I think that's a, a brilliantly earned victory really good hard racing between those two yeah the zero one team they'll, they'll feel aggrieved a little bit but uh, but uh, I think uh, I don't have personally I don't have a problem with that. who am I uh, to claim that of course but um, it was a, it was a, a really hard earned victory literally in every sense of the word by Ricky Taylor the zero one and zero two by the way I'm pretty sure they were back and forth a couple of times in the last few laps I made a note with about four laps to go that number zero one was ahead of zero two that but I didn't see why because there's so many other things to look at during the race but eventually number zero two did finish ahead or Bamba ahead of Rega van der Zander so so, as you say, Van der Zender had to settle uh, he and Bourdais with fifth place after what was a tremendous performance by that Cadillac team. See if we can uh, pick up some more interviews. Shea Adam uh, is out there. Shea. Let's uh, see if we can get Shea. Uh, still waiting for the interviews there down in the Victory Lane area. Shea Adam will be there with for us uh, in a moment. So, Jeremy, the other classes as well uh, in GTD, Jordan Pepper and Inception Racing. What a cracking run for the McLaren team absolutely superb Brendan Areeb did his part earlier on and then Jordan Pepper the South African uh, backing up his former teammates uh, Gilles Gunon who won at Bathurst in the GT3 race uh, earlier on this morning and inception win for McLaren yeah, uh, what a what a great uh, weekend for them. That was a tremendous performance by that team. Jordan Pepper, he was he's been quick all weekend long. He came from fifth place with about what 20 laps to go to take that to move through and take the win. Uh, and uh, it was a, a tremendous performance. Absolutely right. And they were able to stretch the fuel again, uh, like the number. 54 car in LMP3. Colin Brown stretching that 57 laps. I was told 52 laps was about what the <laughs> LMP3 cars to go. Uh, Colin Brown uh, obviously thought otherwise. Uh, and of course, you know, he, he and his, his dad, the strategist there, they're, they're very, very rarely wrong. Uh, in GTD, Jordan Pepper, he managed 58 laps on that final stint. Uh, and again, I was I was told for about 50 laps that there's what GTD cars uh, could w could do. So uh, throw out what I was told earlier on uh, this weekend, uh, because that's clearly uh, not not the reality. The reality is brilliant performances by all of the winners today. She just uh, making her way to victory circle at the moment. Jeremy, we'll take some points from you when you've done a little bit of yep. uh, arithmetic. But just to confirm the results, LMP3, 
Inception Racing for McLaren ahead of the two BMWs. Just over a second between the top three there. Uh, interrupted slightly by the leaders coming through. I would have loved an extra lap for those three cars. I'm sure Inception Racing didn't want that. Uh, it might have even brought uh, Aaron Tielitz and uh, Vasa Sullivan, who were fourth, and uh, Lamborghini with Carbon in fifth position. So... In LMP2, Court Autosport win in the 54 leash year from Junior 3 Racing in the 30. And the pole sitters, Andretti Autosport, are in third position. And in LMP2, Dragon Speed from PR1 Matheson Motor, Motorsport from High Class Racing, 81 from 11 from 20. That'll be your podium there. And it is Conning and Minolda Acura, the number 10 from the 60 Acura from MSR and the best of the Cadillacs, Whale and Engineering, the number 31. You've got points when you need... Yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, OK, starting at the front then in, uh, in DPI, uh, tied on points were the two Acura teams, but uh, the lead was taken yesterday by the qualifying points, qualifying second... Uh, Taylor and Albuquerque to the third of Jarvis and Blomquist. Uh, that to lead extended today with a win for Ricky Taylor and Philip Albuquerque. Their, their uh, second win in succession, taking full advantage of these tracks that do favour perhaps slightly the Acura car. So 1707 points, 1707 points for Taylor Albuquerque uh, and 1675 for Jarvis and Blomquist. Now up into third place again is, I reckon, Earl Bamba and Alex Lynn, who uh, moved ahead of Renga van der Zander and, and Sebastian Bourdais in the closing stages there, so an extra 20 points. They'll have 1,603 points in third position in that class in DPI. In uh, LMP2, just interrupt when you need, when you need to. Uh, the lead coming in here was held by Dwight Merriman and Ryan DeYell. Uh, I reckon now that Henrik Hedman and Juan Pablo Montoya will have 972 to the 963 of Merriman and DL. Third position, Stephen Thomas and Jonathan Bomarito on 950. And then one point behind them, John Ferrano in, in, on 948. So super tight in LMP2. For LMP3, this is just their second race of the season. And I think that uh, Garrett Grist and Ari Baylog will have 688 points with a second place finish today to the 661 of the race winners, Jonathan Bennett and Colin Brown. And into third position, uh, having led coming into the weekend on 647, uh, will be Lance Wilsey. Unfortunately, lost a lap early on, so he didn't really give Jar Bosa a chance of battle for the win. He finished sixth today, but have 647 points. So just 41 points between the top contenders now in uh, LMP3, the top what, what uh, three cars. Thanks, Jeremy. Share Adam down in the area beside the uh, Victory Circle. Our thanks to all of our TV colleagues. We'll hand the PA here at Mid-Ohio over to the formalities. Join us on RS2, IMSA Radio via imsaradio.com for Michelin Post-Race Tech, which comes up right now. <laughs> 